Okay, so good evening, good night, good afternoon, or wherever you're joining us from, right? So I want to welcome everyone to today's session. Today's session is very, very important. It's really relevant because there's this uh, use going on that, oh, okay, is AI going to replace me? Is AI going to do this? Or is AI going to, will I say, uh, take away my job, right? So I want, I want us to really listen throughout this session because it's very, very important, right? So I am Esther Gena Braima. I'm a senior data associate here at Telalytics, and we'll be having an understanding of how we can utilize and apply chat GPT to our different tech endeavors, to our different tech career paths, right? So now moving forward, who are we at Telalytics? What do we do and where, where did we come from? But before we start, I just want to, I want us to do a little exercise, right? So where are you joining us from currently? I need it, I need our responses in the chat, right? I want to see where you are joining us from. Where exactly are you? Which city? Okay. I need our responses. Come on. Okay. Where exactly in Canada, Kennedy? Okay, so I can see Lagos, I can see Ghana, I can see Nigeria. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can see Latvia, Nassau State. That's interesting, right? So okay. Welcome everyone to today's session. And as I mentioned earlier, get your notepads ready, right? Because today we are going to find out if AI is really going to replace us, right? So moving forward, who we are at Analytics, right? So if you've not heard about Analytics, I used to say that, okay, it's probably that you're living under a rock, right? So you need to come, come out from under that rock, right? So basically our goal and our mission here at Analytics is to ensure that African Right, is to ensure that the Blacks are educated in different tech aspects, right? Because you're naturally smart and okay, sharp person. So it is high time we now utilize and channel that uh, okay, awesomeness into the tech industry, right? So we notice that okay, the Blacks, we notice that Nigerians are not represented evenly in the tech space. So we took it upon ourselves to ensure that we provide the right resources, we provide the right guidance, we provide access to professionals that will teach you and educate you on how to excel in your various tech stats. So I can still see our responses. I can see Anambra, I can see UK, I can see Lagos, Nigeria, I can see Kenya. So welcome everyone to today's session, right? So at Analytics, we offer a variety of programs from data analytics to business analysis to data engineering to data science to financial analytics, HR analytics, and power platform, right? So whichever tech career path you want to follow, trust me, we are here to guide you. We are here to ensure that you make the right decisions. We are here to ensure that you take the necessary steps, right? So moving forward, these are the amazing, okay, founders of Analytics, right? So we have Adeida Suleiman, and then we have Femina is good, right? So they are professionals with close to a decade of experience in the data industry, right? So, so you know that, okay, we have tested and trusted personnel, right, that are interested in ensuring that you grow, that are interested in ensuring that, okay, whichever tech career path you're interested in, which area tech career path you want to follow, we provide you with the right guidance, right? So moving forward, we have helped over 500 persons from the previous work year transition into tech, right? So it's not just about you learning the skills. So the whole essence of you acquiring knowledge, the whole essence of you going out of your comfort zone is for you to get a job, it's for you to get money, so it's for you to get an ROI on your investment of your time. So we have successfully helped 500 persons transition from not having a prior knowledge at all to working in different societies and different companies, right? So uh, you get the slides at the end of this session. These are achievements. They are featured in a lot of okay, okay, magazines and newspapers. You can see business day, you can see punch, you can see narrow metrics, right? So when you get the slides, you can just click on this link over here and then proceed to see our achievements for the previous year, right? So one thing that we emphasize on the yeah, analytics is it is not just for you to get this skill, right? So how can you employ, how can you deploy whatsoever you have learned? How can you, okay, utilize it in the real industry, right? So basically we hosted an hackathon for our students, right? So it's not just about them learning, right? How can you solve a problem with the knowledge that you have acquired, with the technical skills, how can you apply this and okay, provide solution to a business problem, right? So this is what our, our hackathon that we hosted 
uh, in the month of May was all about right? you deploying your skills and your techniques to solving a particular problem. So moving forward, we've had like a lot of our participants come work in different companies such as Lever, NHS, Post Office, UK, MTN, we can see First Bank, we can see KPMG, right? So our emphasis, our goal is to ensure that it is not just about you learning the tech skills. It's not just about you getting the technical knowledge, right? But you being able to access those jobs, you being able to be fully integrated into the tech industry, right? So moving forward, our main focus for today, because this has really been buzzing around the internet on Twitter from, okay, from I think early last year, right? So is AI going to replace me as a data professional? Is AI going to take away my job as a data professional? I think, okay, a lot of persons have had this uh, question in their mind that, oh, a lot of persons are getting into tech, but then there's AI, there's AI. So we'll be coming to understand that this evening. So we'll know if really AI is going to take away our jobs, right? So I want us to keep this question at the back of our mind. So at the end of this session, I, I best believe that we'll find the answer to this question, right? So moving forward, uh, what we are going to do today, you're going to learn how you can utilize AI in your various fields, right? So as a business analyst, as a data analyst, as a data scientist, how can you apply AI to ensure that you get the optimum results, right? So that's the first thing. Then, okay, moving forward, you are going to be learning the pathway to becoming a data professional and securing a job wherever you are. So, as I mentioned earlier, it is not just about you learning the skills, right? The whole essence of you investing your time over a long period is for you to get back to investment, it's for you to get a job, a high paying job, and then upskill and upgrade your life, right? So, moving forward, uh, you'll be learning about, okay, analytics that are upcoming for us and then we have a special offer for you at the ending of this session so also you'll be learning about our growth internship program so one thing that recruiters will always hammer on is what have you done what can we see what can you prove to us that oh you're actually tested and trusted right so you'll be learning about this at the end of this session so Moving forward, we are getting started, right? So uh, right now, I'll be welcoming the, co the founder of Tenalytics, Adeza Suleiman. He's going to be taking us through the first aspect. So hi, Adeza. Uh, a good evening, a good night. How are you doing? Hello, Braima. I'm doing very well. How, how okay. are you? I'm very well, I'm very well. All right, brilliant. I think I'll stop okay. sharing right now. Yes, you can, so I can share my screen. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, good to be in your midst today and good to have you all join this session. Uh, Brahma has said a couple of things and also talked about the essence of why Tenalytics exists. We exist to help Black people of the Black community and Africans to get into tech. And I've been working as a data analyst in different capacities for, the, for close to a decade across different sectors from energy to financial services to educational technology, uh, automobile, and so on and so forth. Now, the question, I, I get this question a lot, which is, will AI and the new emerging trends take away my job? Okay, because people have that perception that AI, the new different um, trending emerging technologies will take their jobs. So like Brian said, we'll be finding out in a couple of minutes if that's really the case. And if that's the case, what should you do? If that's not the case, what should you also do? And that's the crux of our session today. And I can see we have people from different regions, from Nigeria, from Canada, from the UK, and so on and so forth. So let's get started. And I'll be sharing my screen. And what I'll be exposing you to is how you can leverage ChatGPT as a data analyst. Brahma would come in afterwards to show you how to leverage ChatGPT as a data scientist. And then you'd have Victor show you how to leverage ChatGPT as a business analyst, okay? So you have different career paths, you have different roles, and you'd see how you can tap into the power of ChatGPT. So as that professional, you get into an organization, everybody should look up to you to say, Adesa always does amazing work. We don't know how he does it, but if you give him a task within the shortest period possible, you'd get a result, 
Okay, so that's the kind of person we always want to be. So how can you get into that capacity? I'll show you in a bit. And today's session is not designed for you to learn Excel or for you to learn Power BI or to learn Tableau or to learn any particular tool. The session is designed to help you understand how as a professional, you can leverage these technologies to actually come up with amazing, compelling solutions without doing too, many, too much work, okay? So let's get into it. Some of you are aware of what chat, if I want to just you know sound you out a bit, get to hear from you. If, you, if you've ever used chat GPT, you know, okay, let's do it this way. If, you, if you've heard of chat GPT, okay, type one in the chat, just enter, enter a one into the chat. If you've heard of chat GPT, Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. A lot, I'm sure that, you know, for most of you here, I'm sure you'd have heard about ChatGPT. So that's simply, simply amazing. All right. Now let's do this other exercise. If you have used ChatGPT as a data analyst, type yes into the chat. If you've used chat GPT, you've leveraged chat GPT as a data analyst, type yes into the chat. Fantastic, she's so clever, brilliant. Um, okay, so we have about five, six people who have leveraged chat GPT. Now, for those of you who are not data analysts, no worries at all, okay? One of the things we'd also show you how to do is how to learn to become a data analyst, because that's the whole essence. For you to jump on the emerging trends, for you to become relevant in the next few years, then it's important and pertinent that you are able to equip yourself with the skills that will get you to that particular stage. Now, the first thing is, for those who might have never used ChatGPT before, hearing it for the first time, most likely, how do you leverage ChatGPT? What is ChatGPT all about? ChatGPT is just an intelligent chatbot. Simple and short. It's a chatbot that is intelligent, is powered by AI, and it generates answers based on text based answers based on the inputs you give to it. All right. So let's let's dive into um, what ChatGPT looks like and let's see if we can get something out of it before the next few minutes. And then Brahma would come to take over from wherever I stop. Okay. So ChatGPT, I'm just simply going to type in chat GPT. And I think for those who have never used it before, you can simply just type it on Google. So I'm just going to type it, see what comes up, and then you'd see how to set up an account because you need to open an account to leverage chat GPT. So I'm just going to type that into my browser. And then I have chat GPT introducing, it's openai, openai.com. I'm just going to click on the very first link openai.com, open in a new tab, or I can click on the second one and you can get started, okay? So you'd see where it says, try chat GPT. You'd see where, where it says sign up at the top right corner, where it says login at the top right corner as well, all right? So for those of you that have never used it before, you might want to sign, sign up before you start using chat GPT, okay? But I have an account and all I'm simply going to do is to click on login, okay? And the moment I do that, I can then log into my um, account. So I can simply, without going through all this hassle, I'm just simply going to type it in directly into my browser. So if you've not logged in before, you haven't signed up, you need to sign up, create an account, and that'll give you access. I already have an account. So I'm just going to open it straight up and then we'll walk from there. Okay, so this is what ChatGPT looks like. This is the interface and this is the platform. And you can see the chat, you know, um, space over here. I can type in anything and then I get a result based on the inputs I have given to ChatGPT. But the essence of our session is on how to leverage the platform as a data analyst. Okay, now let's assume I have data somewhere. And of course, I've downloaded the data already. I'll also share the link to the data sets. I'm just going to share that with you for those who would love to download the data as well. I got the data from Cargo 
So everybody can also have access to the data set just in case you want to try out all the things I'll be showing you today. All right. So I drop the link into the chat. The data set itself is data showing volunteers who decided to measure their blood pressure. Okay. They decided to measure their blood pressure before drinking Red Bull and after drinking Red Bull. So I'm just going to maximize this so you can see my screen a bit better. Okay. So if you can see what the data looks like carefully, you have a colon that says volunteer ID. You have sex, which is for the gender. You have the age group, and then you have the blood pressure before, and then the blood pressure after. Okay. I dropped the link into the chat where you can get that same data set and download it for free. It's on cargo. And if you need to access the data, all you need to do is click on that link. It takes you into cargo. And if you don't have an account, with Kaggle as well, you need to sign up and then have access to the data set. Now, I have this data, I don't know what to do, all right? And you'd agree with me that as a data professional, one of the first things, or one of the major headaches is the problem solving phase where you have to ask the right type of questions to come up with the type of insight you need to get. So imagine you have this data set and you've been told, we want you to do a very quick presentation, tell us, what the data says. Who is mostly impacted by Red Bull? Is it the male or the female gender? Is it what happens before and after taking Red Bull? What's the blood pressure before? What's the blood pressure after? And so on and so forth, right? So you don't know what to do with this data and you need an assistant to help you. And that's what ChatGPT does. That's what I call ChatGPT. ChatGPT is my technical assistant. Okay, my personal assistant or my technical assistant. I can ask ChatGPT questions and ChatGPT will give me answers based on the questions I've asked. Now, I want to find out from ChatGPT how I can start, what type of insight I can generate from this data set that I have. All right, so where do I start? How do I come up with my insights? And so on and so forth. I want to find out from ChatGPT. I can do this with any data set you have. It doesn't have to be this specific one. So you're in the office, you want to come up with insight from data that you have, you don't know what to do. So what I'm simply going to do is, I'm going to copy the headers, all right? The features of my data, volunteer ID, sex, which is for gender, obviously, age group, blood pressure before, blood pressure after. I'll copy the whole headers, okay? So I'll select it and then I'll do a control C to copy, all right? And I would want to paste it on ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, this is what I have. Please help me out. Okay. So I'll go back to ChatGPT. Just simply go back to my browser. All right. And I want to start asking the questions to get or prompt um, ChatGPT to help me come up with the answers that I need. So the very first thing I'll type into ChatGPT is I want to be polite. Okay. And I'll say, hello. Right, and let's wait and see if we get any response from Chat GPT. And of course, I have a response. Chat GPT is very positive and always always wants to work. All right, so hello, how can I assist you today? That's the response that I got. Okay, so I'll simply just say, okay, Chat GPT is ready to work. I want you to act as a data analyst to help me solve some problems, okay? So I want you to act as a data analyst to help me solve some problems, all right? I, like I said, you take chat GPT as your technical assistant. I want you to act as a data analyst to help me solve some problems. And then I hit enter to, and let's see, of course, I'll do my best. I hope you can all see what the response I'm getting. Let me maximize a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think this is better. So of course, I'll do my best to assist you as a data analyst. Please go ahead and let me know about the specific problem you are facing or the task you need help with. Okay, so I'm gonna type in here and I'll say, I have a data set. 
with the following features. With the following features or with the following colons, with the following features, I open a quote, I open and close a quote, right? And I want to put all those things I copied, the headers I copied from my data set, I want to paste it in between and I do a control V to paste, okay? So you would see, I have my volunteer ID. I'm just going to put a comma before the sex, which is for the gender. I put another comma, right? And then I have the age group, okay? I can leave it like this, or I can complete the group, but ChatGPT is definitely intelligent enough to know that age GRP simply means age group. So I might not really need to change that, okay? So BP before I put a comma. So BP might not really be explicit enough so I might want to expand on that and I'll just simply type blood pressure. Okay, so blood pressure before comma and then the other one is blood pressure after. So I'm just gonna type that in. So I don't want to assume that ChatGPT knows what BP is. Perhaps it does, perhaps it doesn't, all right? So I have a data set with the following features. I open a quote, pasting what I have and then I'm going to say, give me five insights that I can generate from the data, all right? So I've pasted my headers. Remember, I don't know what, I don't know how to start. I understand how to use Excel. I, I can analyze data, but I need that external help to just, you know, give me that push. Sometimes you are very inspired. You know exactly what to do. You get in the data, you do your exploratory data analysis. You start from there and then you understand what the data is and you can start your analysis without the help of ChatGPT. But the question is, how do I leverage tools like this to make my work faster, to get to understand my data faster? That's the whole essence. So I've pasted my headers and I've said, give me five insights that I can generate from the data and then I hit enter. The moment I hit enter, all I need to do is wait and see what it comes up with. I said five, because remember it's a very brief presentation. I've just been given the data and I've been told to present something. So this is the response after the answer, the uh, inputs I gave. Certainly here are five insights that you can generate from the provided data sets, all right? Blood pressure change the change in blood pressure, all right? So calculate the difference between blood pressure after and blood pressure before to determine the change in blood pressure for each volunteer. This insight can help identify individuals who experience a significant change and potentially investigate the factors contributing to it. That's the first thing. Secondly, gender distribution, okay? Analyze the sex, the sex feature to understand the gender distribution among volunteers. The insight can help to provide an overview of the male to female ratio in the data sets and so on and so forth. And also help identify any gender related patterns or difference in blood pressure. Very, very interesting insights that we can get, okay? Number three is age group analysis. You might want to do analysis based on the age group, statistical summary, correlation analysis, conduct a correlation between the blood, the blood pressure before and the blood pressure after features. And this insight can help us determine if there's a relationship between the initial blood pressure and the changes observed, all right? Now, this immediately gives you insight into what you can build. And we can get inspired by doing that. I'm going to pick the first one, the very first one that says the change in blood pressure. I want to know the change in what? Blood pressure before and after. Was it significant? Okay, and we'll use different other, you know, parts of our data, other categories to dissect the blood pressure before and after. For the male and female, does it change significantly? Will a female have a more increased blood pressure compared to the male, to her male counterpart, and so on and so forth? Remember, I'm very watchful of time, okay? So I want you to follow me, take a, make a note of the questions you have, and I would love to take your questions before we call it a day today, all right? Now, I have seen the insights, but 
remember chat gpt doesn't understand or know the tool i want to use because i did not specify so I, I could have specified initially to say give me five insights that i can generate from the data using excel all right but then i can also bring it here because i want to visualize i want to visualize something create a chart would create maybe one or two charts and then would look at the charts together okay so i can i'll just ask the next question to say how can i visualize sorry how can i visualize these insights how can i visualize these insights using microsoft excel remember i said we could have done it before we could have done it after but i'm just doing it now okay so how can i visualize these insights using microsoft excel and then i hit enter and let's see what it comes up with okay uh, microsoft excel let's wait and see so for all the different insights it generated remember i said give me five insights and chat gpt generated five insights for me so now i'm saying those five insights tell me how i can use excel to visualize the insights so uh, microsoft excel has several visual visualization options to represent the insight so the first one is the blood pressure change okay and chat gpt is simply saying we want to calculate calculate the blood pressure change for each volunteer by subtracting the blood pressure before from the blood pressure after okay now create a colon chart or a bar chart to represent the blood pressure change values for each volunteer each bar will represent the change in blood pressure now let's look at these very first insights let's let's ignore the second and the third for for a minute the first one is we want to see the change in blood pressure that's the first insight chat gpt has said we should you know visualize what happened before and what happened after and we should represent it using a colon chart or a bar chart giving us recommendations on the type of charts we should use mm. simply because if you are making comparisons you want to compare two things it's sensible to compare with colons because the colons would show them side by side so if the blood pressure before is something like this and the blood pressure after is something like this it means that the blood pressure after is significantly higher and you can see that easily with a colon chart so without even saying anything by presenting a report or delivering a presentation where you have a chart something that is significantly lower the other one is higher everybody would see clearly that wow there is a jump between the blood pressure before and the blood pressure after okay so we're going to pick that and this is where the knowledge of the tool and the knowledge of the domain comes into play right so without the understanding of what to do without you being equipped with the skills to use excel to manipulate data summarize your data and do things like that it could be difficult for chat gpt to point things out to you explicitly to say click on this click on that click on that do this do that drag this here drag that there that might be a little bit difficult okay but with this and with the knowledge I have as a data analyst, I'll make variations and alterations to the insights I'm going to create from the data that I have. Okay, but I'll work on this blood pressure change before and after. So we are going to visualize the data before and, uh, and see what happens before, what happens after, and then we'll dissect it further between the eight, between the genders, female and male. What happens when a female takes Red Bull? What happens to the blood pressure? For the male, what happens to the blood pressure? Comparing the two, is there a significant difference? Yes or no? So I want to see that. Okay. So I'll go back to my Excel. ChatGPT, being a fantastic assistant, has given me what to do. So I'll go back to my Excel, okay, where I copied my um, headers. And here I want to start doing my analysis. Very simple. I'm going to show two things very quickly based on what ChatGPT has given to us. 
All right. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is where the understanding of the two becomes important. The understanding of the workings and the skills of a data analyst, the domain knowledge becomes very important. If not, I would not know what to do. ChatGPT has told me what to do, but then I still struggle to do it. I want to create something called a pivot table to help summarize the data. When you have a lot of data like this, not really much anyways, but you, you can't make any sense of the data without summarizing. So one of the things you'll be doing as, a, as an analyst is to summarize, bring everything together and understand it as a group. And which two in Excel helps you easily summarize your data and it's called a pivot table pivot table. I'm just simply going to type that into the chat. Mine says histogram. You can use a histogram. Absolutely. That works as well. Chiso, um, 11 p.m. is not late, Stanley. All right. So for those who would want to learn, it's fine. We have about two and a half hours on the session and then you stay and learn. Okay. So when we have the sessions at 11 p.m., it's deliberate to target certain people, all right? But you are here, we have people in the UK, we have people from Nigeria and so on. I'm in the UK as well, and it's 11.32 my time, okay? So um, I'm sure if it's something you're interested in learning, you just stay till and learn something very fantastic today, okay? So what I'll simply do is, just so we can use a histogram, absolutely, that works. But what I'll do is I'll use a colon chart just to make it simple, all right? I was going to type the two I want to use, which is called the pivot table. Pivot table. And how do I use the pivot table? Simple. All I need to do is select my entire data set. And how can I select? All I need to do is click on the very first cell and control A. Usually when you want to select all, you hold down the control key and press A, control A. And I'm just going to do that, control A, and that will select my entire that data set for me. And once I've done that, selected the entire data, I'll go to insert on my Excel ribbon. I'll look for insert, click on insert. And then immediately at the left, the very first option I have is says pivot table. It has a drop down. If I click on the drop down, it says from table or range or from external data source. I want to create my table from a range. You see the data I've selected is a range of data. It's a range. So I want to select, I want to create my pivot table from that range. So I'll click on from table or range. And because I have my selection already, I don't need to change anything. I want to create it in a new worksheet that's already selected by default. And I'll simply just click on what? Okay. And when I do that, I have my pivot table. It's blank until I start to populate, okay? I would expand so you can see it's a little bit, you know, uh, bolder. I want to create the two insights from that very first one that ChatGPT has recommended, which is the change in blood pressure. And then we'll take it a step further to dissect it using gender, male and female. Okay. So this is my pivot table. You can see that clearly. And at the right hand side, you have the pivot table fields. The pivot table fields shows you the different columns that you have in the data you use to create the pivot table. If you remember in our data, we have the volunteer ID, the sex, the age group, BP before, BP after, okay? What I'm interested in is the BP before and the BP after, okay? The BP before is numerical, they are numbers. So the BP is maybe 140 something. The BP after is 130 something, okay? Something like that, they are numbers. So what I'm simply just going to do is I'll click on the two. This tick box over here, if you can see my screen, um, if you can see my screen, if I click on the tick box, because they are numbers, they are numerical, they will go into this box over here called values. It would go into the box called what? Values, and by default, Numbers are summed, they are added together, sum. Even though that's not what I want, but I'll just click on BP before. You can see it goes into my values as sum of BP 
before. I'll click on BP after it goes into values again as sum of BP after, okay? And if I go back to my pivot table over here, let's go back here and see. I have clicked on the two, BP before and BP after. It went into values. And you can see that I have the sum of BP before, the sum of BP after. But that's not what I want. What I want is the average or the mean, if you will. Okay, I want the mean, the average. So sum is like saying the BP of candidate one plus the BP of candidate two plus the BP of candidate three makes no sense, but I want to see the average. Okay, so find the average. The average before they took the Red Bull and what's the average blood pressure after they took the Red Bull. So I want to convert this to what average. And I'll just simply do that easily without doing anything you know, technical. I'll just go to the numbers that I have, right click on BP before, I'll right click on it, and I'll select summarize values. If I, if I right click, I have different options to select. And when I go to summarize values by, it is on sum by default. I'll go to average and I'll click on average. And that would give me the average blood pressure before. I'll do that for the blood pressure after, right click on that, and I'll go to summarize values by, I'll click on average again. So now I can see the average BP before, and the average BP after, all right? I'll select the two. I want to take out all these decimals. They're not necessary, all right? So I'll select the two, num the two um, values, click on my home tab, okay? And where I have decrease decimal over here, I'll click on that until the decimal points are gone. So you click on it as many times as you want the decimal points to disappear. If you want to bring back decimal points, you click on increase, decimal points come back. If you want to take them out again, click on decrease decimal and the decimal points are gone. Now, this is the average, yeah? So average blood pressure before, 156. Average blood pressure after Red Bull, 171. There's a, there's, a, there's a definite increase between the blood pressure before and the blood pressure after. But it's not very easy to just see numbers. It's good to what? Visualize. Because remember, I'm going to present. So I want to do this presentation in front of my director, the medical director, the, in front of the head of the NHS, and so on and so forth, to talk about my findings that Chad GPT has pointed me to doing these particular insights. So I need to create a visualization out of this. Um, somebody recommended using a histogram. We don't need a histogram for this. I'll just simply use a colon chart to show the before and to show the after, which one is longer than the other, okay? So I'll click on pivot table analyze. Once I'm clicked inside my pivot table, at the top where you have your ribbon, you see the pivot table analyze. I click on that. All right, once I click on that, at the right-hand side, I have my pivot chart, and I'll click on the pivot chart. And of course, the pivot chart would give me this box containing so many charts. And what I want to select here is the colon and the very first option, which says clustered colon. That's what is selected by default anyways, because Excel 2 is smart and intelligent and knows what to um, give. So I'm just gonna click on OK. And then I have my very first chart or my very first visual, all right? Um, I don't want this thing at the top, this average before, average after. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'll say hide all field buttons. Hide all field buttons. Click on that, it disappears. I want to include a header to say exactly what this chart shows. So I'll click on this plus sign over here. All right, and then I have a chart title. I'll click on that and my title will be, I'm sorry, I'll call this Impacts of Red Bull on Blood Pressure. I like it to make it bold. And maybe I want to change the color to red for some reason. I just feel that would be, that would attract you know, more attention to that, okay? 
So one thing I also want to do very quickly is to add the numbers to the top of the colons. So the very first colon should have a number, the other one should have another number. So I'd right click, I'd right click on one and I'll say click on add data labels, right click on the other one and I'll also select add data labels. Once I have this, I can delete these numbers over here. I don't need them anymore because I already have the numbers on top of each colon. So I'll click on the numbers on the Y axis and I'll hit the backspace key on my keyboard to take it out. I'll click on the grid lines as well. I don't need the grid lines. These lines from the left to the right because I've taken out the numbers. So the, the line now is redundant and just taking up space. So I'll click on that, click the back, hit the backspace key, and that is also gone. So I can see the blood pressure before and the blood pressure after. There is an increase, which means Red Bull impacts the change in blood pressure. Blood pressure goes up after taking Red Bull. And this is very evident, okay, very evident. So what I'll do next is, and I'll do this, and then I'll want to hear from you. Let's break it down into gender, male and female, because this is combined. So is there a gender that is more impacted by taking Red Bull? Everybody takes Red Bull. I take Red Bull. I'm sure some of you here take these energy drinks once in a while. I used to a lot when I was in the university because when I need to read, I need, I don't have, I'm struggling for energy. I take Red Bull or I take coffee. I still take a lot of coffee today. But again, what this does for us is when you take those energy drinks, what happens? It increases your heart rate. The blood pressure increases as well, which might be, might, you know, have to look into that health concerns and so on and so forth. So this is what happens. There's a change, but is the male or the female gender more impacted by this, by the, um, by Red Bull? That's what I want to see now. This is the very first thing I've seen. Very good insights. Now, rather than going back to select, inserting a new pivot table, I already have a pivot table here. I'll just select the very first pivot table I have. I'll copy it, Control C, okay, to copy. And I'll go down here and I'll paste Control V to paste, okay? So I have the same, the exact same pivot table I created at the top. But this time around, I want to dissect it. I want to dissect into male and female. So all I'm simply going to do is I'll go back to the right-hand side under my pivot table fields. And where I have sex, I'll drag sex and drop it under where? Rows. So that each row, one row will show male, the other row will show female. And the numbers will be broken down by male and female. So let's try it out and see, excuse me. So I'll take sex, I'll just drag it and drop under rows. And what happens? Under the rows, I can see female and I can see male. So the average BP before and the average BP after. Okay, but I'm going to do one more thing, which is I want to subtract. I want to subtract and calculate the percentage change to, to you know, put it in context. I want to calculate the percentage change. So I can see clearly that for the female, 154, it jumped to 167, there was an increase. I look at the male, 159, it jumped to 174, there was an increase. But then I want to do what? See the percentage change to show which one has a significant percentage change. And that shows clearly that, oh, maybe this particular gender is more impacted and so on and so forth, okay? But I want to do my calculations outside my pivot table, all right? I'm gonna calculate it outside the pivot table, okay? So what I'm simply going to do is, I'm just going to copy these numbers and I'll bring them to the, I'll bring them below, or I can simply just reference. So I'll come here, I'll press the equal sign. I'll click on female, hit enter. All right, and I'm going to drag it to the right and I'll drag it down to get the mail. Okay, I want to do the calculation outside. So I have my decimals. I don't need these decimals here. So I'll select the numbers and I'll decrease my decimal. Take out all the decimals for me. Now here I have average BP before. I'm just going to copy this and I want to paste it here. Okay, 
So paste it as values, average BP before, average BP after, then now to calculate the what's the change in BP, or let's call it percentage change or change in percent. I'll put my percentage sign over there. Okay, now for me to calculate the change in percent, it means I must subtract the BP after minus the BP before, and that'll give me the difference. But then to calculate the percentage, I need to divide it by the BP before. So to calculate the change, the increase or the decrease, I have to do after minus before divided by before. After minus before divided by before. That's my calculation. Okay, so what was the BP after minus the BP before? If there was an increase, I'll have a positive number divided by the BP before. So very quickly, I'm going to do that calculation here and I'm going to maximize as much as possible so you can see the calculations clearly, all right? So of course, in, on Excel, you start with the equal and I'm going to open a bracket because I have division and I want to see clearly what I'm doing. So equal brackets, my BP after minus my BP before, close the bracket. Okay, that gives me the difference. Like I said, BP after minus BP before divided by the BP before. BP after minus BP before divided by the BP before. Hit enter and that gives me a number, 0 0.085. I, I go to my fill handle at the down right corner over here. I double click on it to give me the one below. Okay, 0 0.085. 0 0.094, all right? While the two decimals are selected, I want to convert them to percentage. So while they are selected, I'll just simply go to where I have my percentage style and I'll click on that. And of course, it takes out the decimal. So it looks as if they are the same. And this is where I'm going to increase my decimal by one point, increase decimal. And I can see the change. For the female, it says 8.6%. For the male, it says 9.5%. So this clearly shows that one is higher than the other in terms of the percentage change. But again, I want to visualize it into a chart like what I have here. So very quickly, I'm going to select what I've done. Let me just type in gender in here. And I did this. Uh, the last, we'll do this and ask ChatGPT one more question and then I'll, I'm done. Brahma would come to show us what she wants to show us. Okay, so I'm going to select all of this. And again, Excel will do most of the work for you. So all I need to do is click on insert. I'll click on um, insert recommended charts. So show me, recommend charts to me that I can use. So I'll click on recommended charts. All right. And Excel recommends this chart for me. I like it. It shows me the before, shows me the after, shows me the gender, male and female. I'm gonna click on that, okay? I'll click on that. Let me minimize a bit. It looks too big. Drag that to the right-hand side over here, all right? Now, to make it a bit better, I'm going to give it a title and I'll call this Impact or Impact of Red Bull on BP by gender let's call it that okay so the impact of red bull on the blood pressure by gender okay make it red so that it's more catchy and i'm simply going to let's add or let's leave let's add the number so we can see so i'll right click on one of the bars add data label right click on the other one add data label and I'll right click on the line. The line shows me my percentage. Right click on the line and I'll also add data label. Okay, but in numbers, this number is on this other number. So I'm just going to change the orientation very quickly. So I'll right click on any of the labels and I'll click on format data labels. So right click on any of the label and click on format data label. I want it to be above. It's currently right, and that's why this is inter lap, inter um, overlapping on the data level for this column. So I'll click on above. Okay, so now we can see 8.6, 9.5.
and I'll close this. Now, I want you to tell me what you've seen. I want to get your own perspective. As a man, do you think you are more likely to be impacted or to get high blood pressure, hypertension, and so on after you drink Red Bull compared to the female gender? If you think the male gender is more susceptible, type in yes into the charts. If you think the male gender is more susceptible to getting high blood pressure after drinking Red Bull, based on what we've done, type in a yes into the chart. Okay. Male judging by the table. Absolutely. Olawale says male is more susceptible. Christiana says yes. Richard says yes. Maureen says yes. Absolutely. Emmanuel says yes. Um, by 0.9%. Absolutely. So it is definitely more. Okay. Now, before I hand over to Braima to show us what a data scientist could also leverage ChatGPT to do. Now you see what I've done. The first thing is, is there an impact before and after? Yes, there is. 156, it rose to 171. Clearly, there is a significant jump. Now going to, breaking it down by male and female, we can clearly see that one gender is what? More susceptible to getting High, higher blood pressure when they take Red Bull. How did I come up with this insight very quickly? Without having to think too much, chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT told us calculate the blood pressure change. Now, based on our own understanding and knowledge, we decided to take it a little bit further to say, break it down by gender, male and female. Okay, so Richard is saying, but the males are more. No, that's not true. The males are not more. They are exactly the same. The same number of male, the same number of female. And how do I know? Let's check Richard very quickly. Okay, I'm just simply going to copy this and I'll go down. Yeah, I think I have just about five more minutes. I'll just paste this here. I'll take out everything I have. And this time around, Richard, what do I want to do? I want to count the number of male and female. Okay, so I'm going to leave my male and female in the rows, and then I'll go back to my pivot table field, and I'll drag the sex again and drop it under values to count for me. And when it counts, what do you see? Female, how many? 60. Male, how many? 60. Total number of people, how many? 120. Okay, so you have equal number of male, equal number of female, and you can see the difference and the change in uh, the blood pressure when you check them between the different genders. The last question I'm going to ask ChatGPT is, I've seen this in my data sets. Does ChatGPT know anything about blood pressure between the male and the female? Okay, so I'm just simply going to type, ChatGPT, which gender? is more susceptible to high blood pressure. So let's ask and see. Charge GPT does not know everything, okay? That's the caveat. It doesn't know everything. It gives you a pointer and a guide. Uh, for things like this, it would be nice for you to do additional research. But what I'm just showing is how you can be so powerful within the space of 15 to 20 minutes, you can do something, do a presentation, it makes sense. Everybody sees you that, wow, you are absolutely phenomenal. So let's enter that and see which gender is more susceptible to high blood pressure. Let's see what chart GPT comes up. Uh, okay, it's still giving me, <laughs> all right, it's giving me based on um, the data that I have. So I'm just simply going to type, ignore the data set and tell me which gender is more susceptible to high blood pressure. Okay, so let's see what it comes up with. I've told ChatGPT ignore the data set because it was trying to give me result based on the data. So it's giving me some results. Let's read it very quickly. I'll be very fast with this. In general, males 
tend to be more susceptible to high blood pressure compared to females. However, it is more it is important to note that susceptibility to high blood pressure can vary depending on various factors as age, lifestyle, genetics, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, all right, so let's see this. That being said, it is crucial to remember that each individual is unique and the susceptibility to high blood pressure can vary, absolutely. But then it gave us a guide to say that in general, males, tends to be more susceptible to high blood pressure compared to females. Why? I don't know. I'm sure your guess is as good as mine, but it gives you an idea to do a lot more research, to get insights into why is that the case between the male and the female gender. And the last question I'm going to ask Chad GPT is, I am a data analyst. I'm a data analyst. Tell me, Will you take my job? Okay, so I'm asking Chad GPT, be real with me, straight to the point. I want to be direct with you. Are you going to take my job, Chad GPT? I'm a data analyst. Tell me, will you take my job? I hit enter and let's see what Chad GPT says. Interesting. Let's read it. Okay, as an AI language model, I'm designed to assist and augment human capabilities, including data analysis task. While AI can automate certain aspects of data analysis, it is not intended to replace human data analysts. Instead, AI tools like myself can help streamline processes, handle rep repetitive tasks, provide quick insights, and assist with data exploration. What it just did, what ChatGPT has done for us the last 10 to 20 minutes is what? Provide quick insights and assist with what? Data exploration. Data analysts bring valuable skills and expertise to the table that go beyond what AI can currently offer. Critical thinking abilities, domain knowledge, problem solving skills, et cetera, ETC, ETC, ETC. And that's the power of what? Chat GPT, the power of AI, you leveraging what you know as a data analyst to helping you to get very quick insights, quick data exploration without doing so much. There are so many things we can do with this same data that we've just explored and see key insights we can generate from this. I've made the data available to you. We've asked ChatGPT to show us what to do. And we've come up with two fantastic insights. Go ahead and try to do more yourself. Will AI represent a data analyst? Absolutely impossible. What you get, what you stand to gain as a professional is the ability to utilize what you already have, complement it with an assistant like Chat GPT. Okay, so I hope you've learned something new today. Try this out. It doesn't work with just Excel, it works with Power BI, works with Python, works with Tableau, works with SQL works with different tools we're ever going to use in the data space as a tech professional. And Brahma is going to come to show us what you can leverage as a data scientist. So Brahma, I'm going to hand over to you. As a data scientist, how can you leverage ChatGPT to do something amazing with regards to exploratory data analysis? I'm still going to be here. I would come back to share with you what you need to learn to become a data analyst. And if you have questions, feel free. I'll be here, send your questions to the chat, and then I'll take your questions before we call it a day. Over to you, Brian. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Adeza, for that little uh, presentation. So, this is Brian, I can barely, I can barely hear you. You sound very faint. You might want to. OK, so can you hear me now? Yes, it's better. Okay, okay, cool. I said thank you so much for that demonstration. All right, so uh, I think I'll be sharing my screen now. So you just have to, okay. So before we uh, proceed, right, I just want to give us an overview of what exploratory data analysis is, right? So I'll be sharing my screen right about now. Just kind of confirm if you can see my screen clearly. Can we see my screen clearly? Oh, yes, we can. Okay, okay. So thank you so much, Adiba. So uh, basically, one of 
one of what you've been spending a lot of time as a data scientist is during your exploratory data analysis process, right? So before you even think of uh, your machine learning model, because when you tell persons that, oh, I'm a data scientist, they feel, oh, okay, okay, okay. So it has to deal with the model building part, right? But to be honest with you, to be frank with you, where you are going to spend a lot of time during your EDA, right? So before you feed your data into your model, before you make predictions, you have to ensure that that data is clean, is ready, you have identified the relationship inside the data, you've understood what your data is trying to communicate, right? So there's a popular saying that if you beat your data, right, it's going to show you hidden things and reveal the mysteries of the data. So moving forward, we want to see how ChatGPT is going to help us, right, and make our exploratory data analysis process very, very easy. Because if you are going to do this the, will I say, the hard way, you have to get domain knowledge on your data. That is, you have to go to the internet, start reading articles regarding, okay, your data futures, your, okay, what your data is saying, your data dictionary, you try to understand first. Then before you now move on to start jotting down, oh, okay, what kind of insights can I acquire? What kind of knowledge? What is this data trying to communicate, right? But then again, ChatGPT is going to make life less stressful for you, right? So moving forward, what is EDA? As I mentioned before, is the process of you understanding your data, you going into your data and trying to see if, oh, is there a relationship between this and this, right? Is there something that I need to remove? Are there missing values? Are there errors that, okay, I know that when I feed, when I feed my data into my machine learning model, it's going to reduce my accuracy a lot. Do I need to remove this, a particular uh, column future that is not relevant? What's the correlation between this particular column and the other column? So this is basically what your exploratory data analysis process is about, right? So you examining your data, trying to understand, trying to see patterns, trying to identify trends, Right. And as I mentioned, you'll be spending a lot of time here as a data scientist, right? So it's not just for you to go ahead and build the model and boom. No, you have to go through a process, a process to clean your data, to identify trends and patterns, and then proceed with your analysis, right? So uh, some key points that, okay, ChatGPT will help you as a data scientist is to provide a clear understanding of the futures of your data set, right? So we saw that just now when Adesa was working with your data set, right? So it gives you like a clear understanding of your futures. And we'll be having like a practical session regarding this now, right? It provides probable questions for analysis. Let's say, okay, you're given a data set and you do not really understand that data at all. You can copy your futures, your column futures, and paste it into ChatGPT and say, oh, hi, ChatGPT, can you help me understand this data? I'm supposed to make a presentation. I, I really do not know where to start from, right? So as Adeza mentioned, ChatGPT is your PA, right? Your go-to person, right? But then again, you have to know what you're doing so you ensure that, okay, you are getting the right response, the accurate response that you need, right? So. Moving forward, the third point, identifying relationship or trends within the data, then suggesting suitable visualizations. So trust me, if you do not have an idea of, okay, which visual will best depict what I'm trying to communicate to my stakeholders, which visual will be clear enough for me to see that, oh, okay, this is the relationship between this and this, right? So ChatGPT is going to suggest that for you. And if you had, if you had to go through the manual process of you having to try visuals and then if you select the one that um, best fits, right? It's, it's, it's going to take a lot of time, right? So moving forward, providing codes for data cleaning and visualization. So trust me, this is the sweetest, most interesting part, right? So. Lastly, generating insights and recommendations from your data sets, right? So these are key points. These are things that would normally take you a while, a ton of time for you to, okay, go through before you proceed with your EDA, right? But now, ChatGPT is going to make life less stressful for you. So we'll be having a practical session now, right? So I want us to go to our browser. So I'm just going to quickly share uh, my browser. Okay. Yes, so give me a moment. Okay. 
so I I best believe we have chat GPT open, right? So you can click on a new chat to open a new chat, and then you are good to go. So you don't likely um okay cause a conflict between when you were using Excel and now that you are going to use Python, right? So we have chat GPT open. I want us to go to our browser and type Google Collab, right? So I want us to follow me. So first things first, you have to have GPT open. And then I want you to type Google Collab in your search bar and then click on the first link, right? So it's going to bring up this interface. So I want to see our responses. Are we here? Are we good? Are we good? Are we following me? We want to see how ChatGPT can help us and make life easy for us as a data scientist, right? So I need our response to Okay, I can see a yes, 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 right? So basically, Google Collab is an IDE, right? So there are a lot of IDE, integrated development environments, which just basically uh, a program where you can come and write your code, right? So you know the way you have okay, Microsoft Word, you have um, WPS, you have like your notebook, right? You use that for typing your documents, but then there are different uh, softwares, right? So that's the same way your ideas work. You have your VS code, you have your PyCharm and the rest, but then again, this is just for writing code and getting your output. So I'm going to click on new notebook. So I have two tabs open here. I have ChatGPT and then I have Google Collab. So if you have both tabs open, I, I need a yes. I mean, or rather I need a one in the chat, right? I need a one, one, one in the chat so I know that we are following me. Are we good? Are we good? Okay, okay, that's nice. Ola and Porter. I need more responses. I want to know that we are following because it's, it's going to be nice, right? We are going to see how this is going to be so easy, right? But as I mentioned before, once you have that background knowledge of what you are going to do, you are just okay, now leveraging chat GPT to make life less stressful for you. So if you have an error, you can just come here and refresh, right? So moving forward, in Python, there are different libraries, right, that help you perform different functions, right? So your Pandas library, your NumPy library, there are different packages in Python that have a okay, specific function that will help you, oh, okay, do you want to perform mathematical calculations? then you know that, okay, you're going to use NumPy and Pandas, right? Do you want to work on your visuals? Then you know that you're going to use Mascot, Leave, and then Seaborn, right? So now, first things first, you have to bring in the libraries that you are going to use. You have to tell Python, oh, Python, these are the libraries that I want to use to work now, right? So bring up this library. So how we do this is you click on the cell, right? So what I just did is click inside this cell, and type import matplotlib. Okay, so I think I need pandas to import pandas as speedy, right? Then import seaborn as sns, right? So pandas is a library, an English library in Python. Right, Seaborn is an English library in Python. So, this as what this as stands for is okay. So, wherever you see pandas, instead of writing this full name as pandas, anywhere you see pandas, I want you to replace it as PG. Right, so anywhere you see Seaborn, I want you to replace it as SNS. So, I'm going to import one last library, right? So, import matplotlib dot five lots as plt, right? So that's why I mentioned that it's very, very important for you to have your domain knowledge, right? So you know that, oh, okay, this library, this is what it's used for. Seaborn, this is what it's used for. Matplotlib, this is what it's used for. So it doesn't look so strange to you, right? So now I have typed out the libraries that I need. So what you are going to do is to just hold your shift key and enter to run that cell. Right, so import pandas as PD. That means anywhere I see pandas, I'm going to replace it with PD. Right, import Seaborn as SNS. Anywhere I see Seaborn, I'm going to put SNS instead of going through the long stress of typing out Seaborn. Right, so anywhere I see matplotlib, 
plus five plus, I'm going to put it as PLT, right? So moving forward, we are getting to the main thing, right? We want to analyze the data set. Let's say you're at work or rather you work from home or you're in your office and they're giving a data set to work on, right? And you don't know where to start from. You don't know how you should go about it, right? ChatGPT can help you solve this and give you insights, right? So we're working with an inbuilt we're working with an inbuilt data set in Seaborn, right? So I want us to follow me. The F is equals to SNS dot load underscore data sets brackets Titanic. So I, I want to believe that we know what's happening with Titanic and Ocean Gates right now, right? So I think he has been trending for a while. So I want us to analyze this data today we'll have like one or two visuals and then we'll see titanic right so this is an inbuilt data set in seaborn so i am just telling python oh python go and bring me this data set right and put it inside this variable called df right so i'm going to come here and shift and enter okay so now i have successfully called this data set right to my notebook. So now I want to see this data set. Let's say I want to see the first 10 rows of this data, right? So I'm going to type df.head bracket 10, shift and enter to run, right? So now this is our data set, right? So I need our responses. Are we good? Are we good? Have we successfully imported our data set? Do we have the first 10 rows? Can we see the first 10 rows of our data? Okay, comporter, I can see your response. I can see Maureen. That's good. That's good. You're already data scientists, right? So we are about to go and analyze this data. So looking at the column futures, you can see survive, C class, sex, age, SIDSP, patch fair. In fact, let's say I do not understand this. This looks strange to me. I don't know. I don't know what this is trying to tell me. I only understand that. Oh, okay. So this is the sex, right? And this is the age. But then I need a clearer understanding of the different features. So what you can do is you can copy the data and place it on ChatGPT, right? Or you can copy just the headings and then ask ChatGPT to create a zombie data for you. Right, so what I'm just going to do is, let's say I copy the first uh, five rows, Control C, and I'll come to ChatGPT. One thing I like emphasizing on is, when you're working with ChatGPT, be deliberate, ask the right questions, be direct, ask, okay, create a context, right? So you know when um, Adeza was showing us with Excel, he mentioned, okay, as a data analyst, acts as a data analyst, right? So I am a data scientist. So I'm going to come and say, hello, ChatGPT, right? Hello, ChatGPT. I want you, okay, so my PA has responded. How can I assist you today, right? So I want you to act as a professional, data scientist. So I've given ChatGPT a context now. So first thing, I want you to act as a professional data scientist. So now moving on to the column features that I copied. I do not understand these column features. I do not understand this data set. I want ChatGPT to help me understand this data faster, right? So I can have my analysis, so I can have my chat and prepare my visuals and my insights for my stakeholders, right? So moving forward, I have a data set, a data set, right? So, you know, I always mention create a dialogue, right? Like you are discussing with chat GPT, you're having a conversation, you are speaking to it, right? So I have a data set with the following futures and data, right, control V, then full stop. So I have pasted the data here, right? So I want to perform exploratory data analysis, analysis, 
right? Can you provide, I'm asking ChatGPT now, can you provide a data dictionary, right? Because I really do not understand what my survived class, my P, survived my P class, my SIBSP, my patch, my fair, my back. I really do not know what it means, right? So I want ChatGPT to assist me, to help me know this, right? So can you provide a data dictionary? Explaining the column futures, right? Can you also suggest, right? So I want to get insights from this data, right? But I want to you to give me insights. So I don't want to start scrolling through each of the rows and thinking that, oh, should I do this? Should I do this? No, I want ChatGPT to suggest um, suitable insights that I can acquire from this data, right? So now, can you provide a dictionary explaining the column features? That's the first one. Can you also suggest suitable insights that I can acquire? right, acquire from this data, this data. Okay, I want this in bullet points, so I can say, give me this insight. In, okay, bullet points. So I'm going to click on enter, right? So irrespective of how you or whichever data set you are working on or whichever sphere or whichever industry it is from, once you know what you are supposed to do, you have that domain knowledge, right? It's to just go and ask, ensure you ask ChatGPT the right question. So now I can see survived, whether the passenger survived or not, right? Tickets, that's your P class. Before I did not know that this meant P class which means your ticket class. So indicating if, okay, the economic status of the passenger, right? So first class, second class, third class. So we can see now that ChatGPT has given us an explanation, right? Of the different column features that I have in this data set. So what I would have normally gone to the internet and trying to start reading articles on the Titanic data set, trying to see, oh, okay, when this data was created, what did the various column features mean? Right, so this has been um, given to us in a couple of minutes, right? So I'm now going to copy this. Okay, I think I'm going to copy this, right? Then I want to paste this here. So I'm going to click on text to insert a new text, right? So click on text. Then I'm going to paste this here. Control V to paste this, right? So I don't need this. Let me just take it out, right? So I only want to see the data dictionary. So I can come here and specify data dictionary right so i always emphasize on you understanding each of the column features before you can proceed right to um your analysis you need to say you need to know okay what is this column actually saying what does it mean right because you can see survive in this data right or you can see pick class in this data when you're working with another data set it's going to mean an entirely different thing right so i'm just going to make this bold then I am going to shift and enter to run. So ChatGPT has successfully provided the data dictionary. So I can read through this and see, oh, and back, okay, where did they, okay, jump on the train from, right? So passenger class, um, person's identity, whether the passenger is an adult male, true or false. So we now have like an understanding of this, right? So now getting to the interesting part, right? So we can see, now let's move on to the suggested insights. So I want us to just try out this first one. Survival rates, determine the overall survival rate of the passengers, right? So I want to know, okay, it has suggested to me, oh, okay, is it that um, the, a lot of persons survive or the a lot of persons die, right? That's from the Titanic crash, right? So I want ChatGPT to give me the code for this. I want to visualize this because me coming to show this to my stakeholder, Right, they might not really understand, and people understand well when you have visuals, right? When they see a clear picture of what you are trying to show them, right? So, I'm just going to copy this control C. Now, as I mentioned before, you are conversing, you are creating a dialogue 
between yourself and your personal assistant, chat GPT, right? So I'm going to say, considering the first insights, considering the insights, this, right? Uh, can you provide, okay, let me move on with, using the Seaborn, I already know what the Seaborn library is for, right? And my math plot lib, as I mentioned before, it's for visualization. Using the Seaborn and math plot lib library, comma, can you provide visualization to show this relationship, right? Can you also provide the code? Can you also provide the code for this, right? Then enter. So I'm going to wait for chat GPT while it is loading, right? So you can see it calculated the survival rate. So what I would just do, I would just copy this control C, control C, right? And come here, control V, then shift and enter, right? So if I go back to my to chat GPT, I can see that the first insight is survival rate. So I can copy the survival rate, control C, and come back to chat GPT. Right, I want to insert a text above this as my first um, insight. Right, let me paste this here. Right, survival rates. Right, so let me, I'm going to run this shift and enter. Right, so now I can clearly see now that I just I asked a question and I, I prompted ChatGPT to give me the code and give me the visuals, and it just gave it to me right, straight up. So I can see now the total number of persons that survived, right, this is it, right? And we can see compared to those that did not survive, we can see this is it. So we can clearly now jot down that, oh, okay, during the Titanic crash, during the fall of the Titanic ship, right, a lot of persons died, right? So out of the whole, okay, persons that boarded that ship, only 38% survived. So now looking at the code, SNS the set style, that is the style, right? So SNS the figure, fixed size, that is the, okay, length and the breadth that you want your shape of your, okay, chart to be, right? Then count plot, this is counting of oh, those that did not survive and those that survived, right? Then um, your label, that's your Y label, then your X label survived, right? Then it's now specified, okay, your S to sustain, wherever you see zero, replace it with no. Right, wherever you see one, you place it with yes, right? So it has made life easy for you, right? So I can still come back and say, oh, from my data sets, chat, from my graph, from my charts, I can see that the survival rate is 38%. Full stop. Can you explain what this means? Can you explain what this means, right? Let's say you do not understand what your survival rate is, right? So you can see, you can see, it's just going to plainly explain to you that, oh, okay, indicates that the majority of passengers did not survive the disaster. So you can now copy this and come to your, okay, your Jupyter notebook, your Google Collab, or if you're working with VS Code, and then include a note under that. Oh, from my above visuals, I can see that the total number of persons that are okay, boarded, of the total number of persons that boarded the Titanic ship, right? The number that died, it's more compared to those that survived, right? So I want us to try out the rest of the insights, right? Ask strategically to the right questions, right? So the important thing is you might not always get the uh you might not always get the right visual that you want, but then again, that is where your knowledge of how this chart works comes into place, right? So you can now then tweak the code to ensure that, okay, it's more okay, professionally represented, right? So basically, ChatGPT is going to make your EDA less stressful for you. So you might, 
want to okay, depict something, but you don't know how to write your code, you can just come and say, oh, okay, I'm trying to show the relationship between this and this. Using this library, can you give me the code, right? So that when you now copy that code, you can work on it. You can ensure that, oh, okay, there are no errors because ChatGPT might give you errors. It's now on your part as a professional to work on them, right? So uh, this is where I'm going to stop before uh, Victor comes in. So you can see how ChatGPT makes your life easy as a data scientist. So while you would have taken a ton of time trying to think of your code, trying to think of, oh, okay, so if I, if I do my S6 this way, can I represent my one with a yes and my zero with a no, right? So it makes life extremely stressless for you. But then again, you have to understand what you're doing so you can ask the right questions, right? So uh, Deza, I think I'll be handing over to you at this point. All right, thank you very much for that, Brahma. Fantastic work. And just so that you also understand, yeah, you can go as far as even creating your machine learning model. You still leveraging ChatGPT step by step. You ask the questions, ask ChatGPT to come up with a machine learning model to predict X, Y, Z for you, and then you get all the codes that you need. And of course, like Brahma rightly mentioned, you also want to take note of the fact that you could get errors, it's possible. And that's where your understanding and knowledge of the tool and the different um, you know, skills required being a data scientist, which I'll speak about in the next few minutes, once we have Victor coming to show us how to do one more thing using ChatGPT as a business analyst. All right, so Victor would have, this, have that very brief session with us and then I'll come back to wrap up our program for today, which would involve talking about how to get into data analytics, data science, business analysis. We'll talk about the program we have upcoming and then we'll call it a day. Victor, over to you. All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I hope I can be heard 100%. Yes, we can hear you, Victor. Awesome, awesome. Thank you once again, um, Adeza, for this opportunity. And uh, thank you so much, Brahma. So much wealth of knowledge right there. And I believe everybody has been able to imbibe something. Okay, so a brief introduction. My name is Victor Etim. I am a senior data associate with Analytics, um, close to five years of experience as an expert data analyst. So um, you're going to see how I can use ChatGPT or leverage it um, for the sake of helping my business or the business corporation I work with make better decisions that of course will earn us money, right? That's the aim of doing a business. If you don't earn money in a business, it's just a hobby. Okay, all right. So we will just get straight to it because of time. And I will share my screen. So, good enough i'm just gonna head straight to chat gpt um you've pretty much heard what chat gpt can do um so i'm just gonna demonstrate okay now the tool i'm gonna be using for this exercise is called sql a structured query language now if i may put it this way as a business analyst okay your main objective is to marry the knowledge of the technical um, solutions and the knowledge of the stakeholders and produce a wealth of insights that can be put into action. Okay, so because of that, and based on the trend of what's happening in the world now, we have inculcated um, SQL into your curricula as a business analyst so that should in case you're in a team where a team member is maybe for some strange reason incapacitated, you can actually still make your project work, okay? Now, let's go straight to it. So this is my chat GPT interface. I'm not using the black one. I'm using the white interface. So I'm just gonna say, um, hello. I am a business 
data analysts. And I want to carry out a business project right now. And you help. Okay, so this is just um, uh, formalities to help it streamline its um, resources towards helping you. Okay, so basically, you have over this few minutes learned how to leverage ChatGPT if you didn't even know what to do with the data set you got. Okay, maybe your company gave you a research to do. Oh, go find out this, and you don't know much about the data sets. So we've shown you how to leverage that. But what if you have access to information about your data set and you have access to deliverables? Okay, what do you do? Now, one of the main things you're going to find out in your data set is a data dictionary. Now, um, Brima laid emphasis on that. You cannot effectively work on data without understanding the meaning for each column in your data set, okay? So the moment you understand exactly what each column stands for, then you stand a chance to work efficiently and effectively with your data. Now, so I'm gonna assume I work with a bank, okay? And now this bank is experiencing lots of fraudulent transactions. Now I have my data dictionary. Okay, in my department, we've been able to gather up a data dictionary. Every single column has a name, and then we've been given the meaning and interpretation for every single column. So without wasting much time, I'm just going to copy the column headers, okay, from, from the step to is flagged fraud. So a brief synopsis. Um, the step is um, the time unit, the type is the type of transaction, amount is the money, and several of them. Okay, so I've copied that, and I have brought it to ChatGPT, I've pasted, okay? Now, I want to give it a bit of context to work with. You know, um, if I come to you and I say, I'm losing money, out of the blue, you're going to look at me and be like, Victor, how is that my business? But if I come to you and I say, my friend, I'm losing money. And this money I'm losing should have been beneficial in such a way that I could have improved my business organization and employed more people from your school. Aha. So I've given context to what I said about losing money. So we're going to give context. Okay, so above is a data dictionary for a project I am working on in my bank. And you write me a query for SQL that would help me create a table. Okay. Now, look at what's happening. All right. Before I continue, I'd like to ask a question, a very simple question. How many of you have ever come across the tool SQL before? You can do a thumbs up, you can do a yes in the chat. How many of you? Okay, okay, Maureen, yes. All right, all right, wonderful. So quite a number of you have, okay, I think somebody said it would be helpful if I didn't really get that part, but I can see that some of you have actually had access to SQL. So you have a fair idea 
of what it does. So a simple explanation of what SQL does, SQL means structured query language, okay? So let's say in your dialect, um, the slang for let us eat. I, I, I remember a funny story. So I, I tell this funny story sometimes when I want to explain SQL. I say, um, when I was a youth copper, um, my local government, um, my local government supervisor would come to me and say, let's go and learn. And I'll be like, what does that even mean? <laughs> but one day he told me it actually means let's go and eat. Okay. And I finally saw that he was saying something so simple to me in another dialect. Now, SQL is you using like the pidgin language of that particular program to interact with it and retrieve information from your data. Okay, so structured query language. It's a special language for retrieving information from your data. Okay, so um, for this, we're gonna be using the um, PostgreSQL. Okay, that's the database um, machine, database management system rather. Okay, so we saw chat GPT generate for us a table. Now, I'll show you why this is very important. I will show you why this is very important. Mind you, it took all the headers from here. So step, type, amount, name, origin, is fraud, is flat fraud. It took all those headers and gave me a table. And then generously, it explains the reason for each things it's highlighted out. Okay. All right, beautiful. So the reason I said that's important is there is another way for creating tables in um, PostgreSQL. You can right click here, okay? You can right click here rather and come to create a table. But the method sometimes, if you're not that good with the tool, might be difficult. So I usually say, why don't you just write a query? So by asking ChatGPT to write me a query to create a table, I copied it and I just come and I paste it. Simple as that. So it's taken into um, recognition every single column, giving it the right data type because there is a syntax for um, creating a table on SQL. And it's going to do that research for me and has done everything I need. So all I need to do now, um, okay, so I will change one thing. Just one thing, okay? Just for sake of this, we'll change one thing. Now, I'm just changing the name of the table. I haven't done anything too special. I'm changing the name of the table. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. And then it shows me query returned successfully. Okay, so, but I looked here. I can't find the table, no problem. I just refresh and the new table I created is showing right here. Okay, now you might be wondering, so what do I do next? No problem. Why don't we come and even check the essence of this um, table creation that ChatGPT did. So I'm gonna ask, can you show me by writing a query of columns, the table I created? Okay, so, and like Adesa pointed out, ChatGPT is always positive. Certainly, it tells me. So it gives me a query to show me all the columns for the table I created. 
Now, mind you, I said I changed something. What did I change? The name of the table. Now, I'll explain the table thing to you so you gain clarity. Okay, now, let me first run this. Okay, so you can see all these things right here are appearing as individual tables. Okay, now let me kindly explain what we mean by creating a table. You see, in your house, you have a kitchen and in that kitchen, you have a store. Okay, now in that store, you might have a container where you put your gary or rice. Now, the real thing you need is the rice or gary, isn't it? Wonderful. But you need to put it in a safe container. So that safe container where you put it is your table. But that table needs to be in a location also. Now, that store where you are putting the table is a database. Okay? So what we've done is we've created a container by writing a query. Okay? Now, the reason there is nothing showing under all these is because we have not put any data inside. All right, so I'm going to create a data set using ChatGPT. I'm sure you would like to see how that works. All right, can you also insert for me a 20 data set within the table you created using SQL. Okay, so I think I made a typo here. I'm just gonna correct that. All right. So I've asked it to create a 20 row Oh, okay. I think it's too much for it. All right. Why don't we make it five? Why don't we make it 10 rows then? So it appears 10 was too much for it to make. So it's pretty much going to do I mean, 20 was too much, so it's pretty much going to do 10 for me. So good, good. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting. Watch, watch this. So I've copied all this, right? Now I'm about to run it. I'm about to put values into every single column. So I run it. Now, Sometimes when people see things like this, they start to panic. You know, there is an erroneous notion that SQL is so difficult. It is not difficult. And it is now even simpler now that you have access to ChatGPT. So as an expert, I can now tell that there is something wrong here. I can see the arrow. So the error, you know, um, even in data science, Code debugging is the code talking to you and teaching you how to do or write codes better. Now, it's telling me that the column is fraud, is of type Boolean, but expression is of type integer. Now, I'm like, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, I'm actually the expert, so I should know. You see why domain knowledge is important? So I come and I look. Where is my column is fraud? You see, it mentioned column is fraud. Where is that? And I come here. I say, oh, my data type is Boolean. Now, does anybody know what a Boolean data type is? Can anybody tell me? If I say a data type is Boolean, mostly what does it mean? Does anybody know? Feel free, be adventurous. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Joy. True, false. Now, 
But instead of true false, I'm having zero zeros here, binaries. That's not right. So as an expert, I go back to chat GPT and I say, you gave me data sets and that is fraud and is flagged fraud as integers instead of boolean. I was going to correct itself. So it's correcting itself now. Beautiful. So it's saying in this updated query, I have used false to represent the Boolean value for is fraud and is flagged fraud where you have zero, right? So you see, you no longer have, oh, it made everything false. Uh, okay, I wouldn't like that so much. And you have a proper mix true and false for this data set instead of false. Right. So that's the joy of relating with the data and um, with ChatGPT. You can tell it what you want. If it's not getting exactly what you want, you write a message again to tell it, can you do something better? So now you can see it's done something much better, right? You have a proper mix of true and false, not just total false, right? So I copy this, okay, copied it. I'm just gonna remove this one I did that gave me an error. Then I'm gonna put the new one inside. Then I'm gonna run it. Now you see something else happens. Query returns successfully. Okay, so I no longer have an error. It's now a successfully run query. So now I want to now show my full table. Okay. Hmm, it's interesting. Oh, okay. Notice this, notice this. I'm gonna show this to you. <laughs> so the reason why nothing happened when I ran this, um, we, we can't overstress this enough. The domain knowledge, very important. Now, I brought in a query and I ran it. Insert into, then you have transactions here. But the table we are working on is called a fraud table. So of course, even though it ran successfully, it can bring anything inside the fraud table. So what do I do? I'm just gonna give it the appropriate name. Okay, fraud table. All right, now let's do the magic again. All right, and let's see what happens. Beautiful. So can you see how the mixture of, so I, I think Adesa typed in a message to chat GPT if it can replace you. So you see that it is a unique connection and relationship between you and your technical assistant that provides the best um, results that your company needs to take the best insight, I mean, to take the best actions, okay? It's that connectivity, your ability to have a, a should I say, a good knowledge of your field, which is one of the places we come in, and then your ability to type in the proper thing into chat GPT. Okay, so now we've been able to bring out the table. All right, so let's say we want to do analysis. I, let's say at this point now, my company didn't tell me what to look for. Now I would do something that you've already seen before today. So I'm going to ask, can you write me queries for certain metrics I need to be concerned with as a business analyst.
look at look at what's happening so without my sitting down to crack my brain on how to come up with several queries chat gpt has generated one two uh how many is this one two three four five six uh seven eight nine ten eleven eleven things i need to look out for okay so let's take a few and run it shall we let's take a few and run it so we're going to start with the total number of transactions so we want to find out how many transactions yes because it's a you already know it's 10 because i am the one who did it but what if you were working with a data set that had a lot of transactions and you couldn't really tell so i'm just gonna change the table name again but sometimes you also want to be like a pro and you don't want anybody to think oh he just went and copied everything right so you might need to add your own little flair on it so you can see we have um sq are telling me you have a total number of 10 transactions in your table okay let's go back to chat gpt and see what other analysis can we do okay so average transaction uh well let's go to something a little more technical number of fraudulent transactions aha okay so let's find out number of fraudulent transactions without me writing a query by myself okay that's the beauty of this okay fraud table okay i'm gonna run this so you have four fraudulent transactions that properly happened or actually happened okay then which other one can we do all right then we have um percentage of transactions flagged as fraud meaning this one is what the bank was able to detect okay is fraud is a literal fraud that happened but is flagged fraud is what the bank's algorithm could detect so look at this now this is percentage, percentage of that. Okay. Fraud table. Fraud table. Okay. Now, looking at this, it looks like it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things showing up here. But with my domain knowledge oh let's say i still don't have too much domain knowledge okay i can say how can i provide the answer for the percentage of transactions flag as fraud in actual percentage and not decimals write me the query Okay, so it's written me another query, re-representing this one. So I'm just gonna go back to my SQL. I'm gonna paste it. Remember, we are changing the table name to use the exact table name we used. Okay, so let's see. Beautiful, so it's giving me 20% now how does chat gpt help you as a business analyst to give insights 
So your data analyst team, because you're more like a supervisor in some sort. So your data analyst team or your technical team, they've gone through the data, retrieved everything, and they found out that, okay, so 20% of the transactions are flagged fraud. Okay, so where fraud actually occurred, just 20% is flagged fraud. Okay, so I can now come back and ask. I noticed that just 20% of the transaction is flagged fraud by the bank's algorithm. What does this mean? And are there any advised solutions? So you ask. So notice what it's saying to you. So it's giving you a list of options, a list of options. Amazing. So read just this few parts with me. Say if only 20% of the transactions are flagged fraud, are flagged, sorry, as fraud by the bank's algorithm, it means that the algorithm has identified a relatively small portion of the potentially fraudulent transactions within the data sets. So now it's coming again, trying to answer my second question. And are there any advice solutions? Says to improve the fraud detection rate and reduce the false negative rate. Here are some advice. Review and adjust the fraud detection algorithm. So imagine you're in a boardroom with the stakeholders. Now, you've just written this point, but ChatGPT has already told you the meaning of every single point. So you must have at least been able to understand the meaning of every single point. So when you visualize your data, because you can actually take things from here after you've done work on SQL, go on Power BI, do some proper visualizations, and then you now want to present to your stakeholders. But ChatGPT has given you and highlighted a couple of things you need. So you just pick them as an expert, cool, calm, collected. You're explaining every single point. Trust me, every time the organization has a challenge, they're gonna call you, <laughs> you know, and this is just by leveraging ChatGPT, your technical assistant as Adesa always calls it. Now, this session was not to show you everything that you can do on SQL, neither was it to show you everything that you can do on chat, with ChatGPT, but I hope you've been able to learn a lot. And at this point, I'm just gonna pass it back to Adesa. Thank you so much for the opportunity, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that, Victor. A very brilliant submission. I love the fact that you talked about the false negatives. There was something definitely wrong with the predictive model or the machine learning model the bank had developed to identify fraudulent transactions. So out of the transactions that were actually fraudulent, the bank's algorithm was only able to identify 20%, meaning that there is a problem and then they need to tweak the algorithm or train a better model to help them to predict. And that's the beauty, like we always say, of how you can leverage these tools. So when people ask the question around, will this particular tool replace my job? The new trends, what would happen eventually? So I always just tell you that, look, it's very simple. No tool is gonna to replace your job as long as you have the skills required to operate as a data analyst, as a business analyst, as a data scientist, and so many other, in so many other capacities, all right? So I'm just quickly gonna wrap up the session very quickly to show you what does it take? And this is where Tenalytics comes into play. What does it take for you to become a data analyst or a data scientist or a business analyst? What does it take? And how, which role do we play in you becoming any of these um, professionals at the end of the day and what makes you successful on the road. Anybody can learn the technical skill to get into any of these spaces, but what's that fundamental difference that helps you get the job 
irrespective of where you are and how we've also helped so many other people make that transition and get a job within the space. So I'll just quickly run through my slides for the next 20 minutes and then we are done with our session for today. So I'm just gonna share my slides and then we'll continue and start to wrap up our session for this evening, okay? So what does it take to become a data analyst? All right, so let's start from there. Getting into data analytics, you must have a structured learning path. And clearly you can see step-by-step step from my slides, you learn all the tools, all the skills you need. And the first thing you have to learn, you cannot run away from it, is problem solving. Asking the right questions, knowing what to start with, all comes from where? Problem solving. So that's the very first thing you have to learn in becoming a data analyst. Once you understand how to solve problems, the right tools, the right techniques, the different types of frameworks you would use to get to, to the root cause of problems and so on and so forth, you move to number two, which is Excel. You saw me use Excel to do what? To summarize data, to create charts that I'm gonna to present to the key stakeholders. How do you leverage Excel to do amazing stuff? How do you leverage Excel to manipulate your data, summarize your data and do all of those things? So you need to learn all of that. And you don't need any you know, knowledge, any prior knowledge in any of these areas to get started. You can start right from where you are. We've worked with people who owned bakeries. There were bakers, they baked um, different uh, pastries, cakes, and so on. They ran their business, nothing related to analytics or anything tech, but it got into the space and became business analyst and data analyst, all right? And it's a heavily skill-based area. So all you have to do is learn the skill. It's for those who have no experience. You don't need to have data analytics experience. No experience is required. You learn problem solving, you learn Excel, and then you move to Power BI. Power BI for data analytics. You build amazing visualizations, create business intelligence solutions using Power BI. You'd also learn SQL, all right? SQL, SQL, structure, structured query language, is that language that you saw Victor writing a few seconds ago. So as a professional, as anybody who would have to work with data, as a data analyst, for example, as a business analyst or a data scientist, just like what Brima showed you using Python, you can't run away from SQL. If you want to get into any of these areas and you don't know SQL, they are just wasting your time, all right? So SQL structured query language helps you interact with databases. Organizations would have their data in a database. It's then left to you to know how to interact with that database, extract data from the database, carry out analysis, just like Victor did, on the, the different tables you have within the database. And that's where SQL helps you out, all right? And then we move to Tableau. Tableau is where you have a tool so fantastic, just like Power BI, create amazing visualizations. And one of the reasons why we added Tableau to the data analytics curriculum is simple. You have businesses, companies across different locations with different preferences for different tools. Some organizations would have a preference for Tableau, some would have a preference for Power BI. But rather than learn Tableau and ignore Power BI, and then you have a limitation to the number of jobs you can apply to, or learn Power BI and ignore Tableau, and you still have a limitation to the number of jobs you can apply to, why not learn the two? And we saw that demand in the market, and then we decided to what? Add Tableau to the curriculum. So as a data analyst, you're going to learn Power BI, you'd also learn Tableau, and then you'd learn data storytelling and how to leverage chat GPT. What you've seen today is a fraction of what you can do with chat GPT as a data analyst. What I showed you on Excel today is just a fraction. You can create a full blown dashboard on Excel using chat GPT. You can create linear regression models on Excel using chat GPT. Same with Python. You can build a fully fledged machine learning model on chat GPT and you'd learn that as part of the things you'll be doing in any of the programs because we've incorporated chat GPT as one of the one of the modules you'll have to go through in any of the programs simply because 
as the market changes with new technologies, with new trends, you have Microsoft Fabric, you have Copilot coming up, you have ChatGPT, different other AI tools coming up as well. How do you embed that into you being a professional within the space, taking advantage and being ahead of the competition? Because that's the goal. If I'm going to compete with other people, there must be something I have different differently from them. I can use that to sell myself. So this is what the program entails for a data analyst. You learn all these six skills, you can get a job anywhere in the world, in the UK, in Canada, in anywhere across Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, so on and so forth, in the Middle East. And I'll share some you know, success stories, some experience of people who have done this, they've gotten jobs, and how they were able to get it, leveraging all these skills as data analysts. Now, when you move to data science, all right, here you are focusing a little bit more above what the data analyst would do. And when I say that, for the data analyst, you are working on two key aspects of analytics, which is descriptive and diagnostic, okay? So you saw what I did, descriptive and diagnostic. You saw what I did with Excel. We saw pressure, blood pressure before, blood pressure after. That's what the data had, what the data said, okay? So I showed it to you. And clearly we could see that there was a difference between before and after, there was a rise. What happens when you take Red Bull? Before you take Red Bull and after you take Red Bull, there was an increase. Anybody who sees that would ask the reason, would ask, why do you have an increase? So showing you or creating that chart to show you what the data says is what? Descriptive. You are describing the data. That's descriptive analytics. Diagnostic analytics is going a little bit deeper into the data to find trends and patterns that could help you explain why you had an increase or why you had a decrease. Okay, so relating this to business, you could have run different adverts or different promotions the previous week. And the following week, you see a sharp rise in your sales, the revenue increase compared to the previous month. That's what happened, descriptive analytics. Then you go back to look at events that happened that you can tie to that increase or decrease respectively. So you can tie that increase to what? The promotions you had the previous week and so on and so forth. And that's what descriptive and diagnostic analytics is all about. You would use all these different tools to understand what happened, why it happened, so the business can take data-driven decisions. But for data science, on the other hand, you are focusing more on what? Prescriptive. prescriptive. I beg your pardon. Before prescriptive, you have predictive predictive analytics, mostly this is what you'll be doing in data science, predictive analytics, which involves looking into the future, forecasting what is going to happen in the future based on what has happened in the past, right? So if somebody took Red Bull, blood pressure increased from 157 to 174, okay? You create a model based on the gender, based on the age group, and the difference between before and after the blood pressure when you take Red Bull, you create a machine learning model that can help you predict what the blood pressure would look like if the person is 25 and the person is a male, or if the person is 50 and the person is a female. So in creating that model to predict what would happen, learning from what has happened in the past is all about predicting. You are predicting what would happen in the future and the ability to predict what would happen in the future. And if you tie this back to a business, you could have a business where you deliver, you have a, um, a delivery business where you deliver packages. So you have different companies like Conga, Jumia, they have a settlement uh, location where if somebody orders something, they bring it to you as the third party logistic company to deliver those things to customers. So Jumia brings in packages, Conga brings their own packages, Amazon brings their own packages as well, okay? So you've been doing this for the past two years. Now you want to know 
how many boxes am I likely going to get in on the second week in January? I want to know. So you need to forecast based on what you've been getting for the last few weeks, what are you likely going to get in the next week? All right, so you're going to forecast, you're going to predict so that you can plan. So if I'm going to get 500 boxes in the future using different forecasting techniques, moving average, exponential smoothing, linear regression, and different techniques like that, you can see what is likely going to happen in the future based on what has, what has been happening. And you can then plan to say that, look, let us have 10 people on ground based on the number of boxes we are likely going to get next week. And that's how businesses plan for the future. And there are so many other things you can build and create. That's just putting it in a very simple format. And to create forecasting models, to create predictive mod models, to create machine learning models, you need statistics. That's the foundation. So as a data scientist, you're going to start from statistics. You learn the different types of different areas that would help you build your models, which is hinged on um, understanding things as simple as the measure of central tendency, for example, understanding the mean, the mode, the median, and so on and so forth. Then you'd move into Excel. The difference between the Excel you learn as a data scientist and the Excel you learn as a data analyst is one focuses more on what? Forecasting and predicting. So Excel for data science, you're going to learn different forecasting techniques, the naive approach to forecasting, the exponential smoothing, you'd learn moving average, you'd learn um, linear regression, and so many other types of techniques to predict what would happen all on Excel. Tableau as well, the difference between the data science part of Tableau and the data analytics is predicting. So you'd learn how to forecast, how to predict using Tableau. Then you'd move to SQL. Remember I mentioned how important SQL is. And then you learn Python programming because your machine learning models, for example, will be built using Python. Python is the most robust programming language for data science that exists today, all right? And then you'd learn data analytics and visualizations using Python, you carry out exploratory data analysis, you carry out data visualization using Seaborn, using Matplotlib and different other um, libraries that exist in Python. And then you learn machine learning, how to build machine learning models, both supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. You'd learn how to do that and also how to leverage ChatGPT as a data scientist similar to what Brimer showed you, which is just a fraction of what you learn. And then you move into computer vision. I'll show you a project that people, show you different projects, not just one, that people built on computer vision, leveraging libraries like OpenCV and MediaPipe, okay? Now, if you take your iPhone, MediaPipe, you take your iPhone and you put your iPhone in front of you, what happens? It unlocks the phone. Why? Because your iPhone has learned to understand your face. It understands what Adesa's face looks like. So whenever it sees that face, what happens? It knows that it's the same person and it unlocks the phone. The technology that drives that process is a computer vision program built into the Apple iPhone, of course, which you would also learn how to build. You build things that detects object, detects posture, detects the face, the eyes, and so on and so forth. And that's what the data science program is all about. Then you move to business analysis, which is the last but not the least. The business analysis here as a business analyst, you are an intermediary or an interface between the business and automation or IT, all right? So you are focused on understanding the business processes, understanding the business model, how the business runs, so you can help the business achieve its objectives. For example, you meet with different types of, um, you meet with different types of stakeholders within the business to get to to help the business get to where it wants to get to, and then you start to ask questions to those stakeholders, the heads of departments, for example. Commercial department, this is the target for the next two years or for the next five years. What does it take for us to achieve this target? 
you look at the processes within that department and map out the processes. Okay, so you're going to do process mapping using tools like draw.io. Draw.io to map out processes. And then as a business analyst, you then start to look for inefficiencies or areas that you can optimize to improve that process, which is simply optimizing the process. So you're going to carry out process optimization as well. So you'd interact with the stakeholders and sometimes to optimize those processes, to make them efficient, you'd have to come up with different projects to build software, to build applications that would, that would do what? Uh, automate the processes. So for you to do that, you also need to understand the software development life cycle. You need to understand how to initiate projects you need to understand how to manage pro projects using different project management methodologies from agile to scrum to waterfall and so on and so forth. So you're going to learn all of that as a business analyst. And that's what a business analyst will do. You're going to manage projects. You're going to serve as an interface between the business and IT. You're going to manage projects regarding automation. You're going to map out processes optimize those processes. You have an as is process, the way the process is, optimize it, and then you get it to be process, which is what the process should be that a business should adopt. You're going to do all of that. So you'd learn Excel, Power BI, and SQL. That's the very first three things you'd learn as a business analyst. As a, as a business analyst, you'd learn that data analytics. You have data analytics flavor into your curriculum. The reason is simple. Even though your fundamental role would not be to analyze, visualize data, no. But you need to know how to handle data within the business, where the data comes from. If you need to pick something from the database, you need to know how to do that. If you want to project and present your project using Power BI to show the project status, of course, there are tools to, to show that, but you could also bring the data into Power BI, do some analysis and build a dashboard to show your different um, you know, timelines and so on and so forth. So you'd learn all of that and then you move into project initiation planning and agile essentials because you're going to manage projects as a business analyst. You would initiate some of those projects, you'd manage them, come up, use different tools, project management tools like um, Microsoft projects, you would use Confluence, you'd use Jira, you'd use Trello for collaboration, you'd use Slack, as well for communication and so on and so forth. You'd learn and understand the software development life cycle, requirements, fundamentals, elicitation, analysis, specifications and approval. You'd learn different project management tools, business analysis toolkits, agile and scrum. You'd learn the waterfall methodology as well. You'd learn, um, of course, agile online collaboration, stakeholder analysis and engagement, setting up performance measures as well. So you'd learn all of this as a business analyst to help the business achieve what it wants to do. Your typical program from all the different areas, apart from data science, data science is four months. But for the data analytics, business analysis is three plus months where you learn in a project-based environment, project-based classes for two months, and then you work on a capstone project for two weeks once you are done with your live classes. After your capstone project, you then join the virtual internship. Now, the virtual internship is one of the most amazing things you can ever do as a professional. And the reason is simple. Any employer would want to see what you've done before. They'd want to see the type of projects you've worked on. Can you say you have any experience utilizing, implementing any of the tools? You said you're a business analyst, you've mapped out processes, you optimize processes. Can I see some of those things that you've done? Can you present them to me, All right? As a data analyst, you've solved problems for businesses, you've built dashboards, where are the dashboards? Can I have a look? This is where you do it your virtual internship for one month, where you get to build your portfolio of solid projects. Of course, you'd have projects you build during your learning journey for two months, because your, your classes are project-based. You learn something, you work on a project immediately to reinforce the things you've learned and put it into practice. 
Okay, so but for that one month, every week you are working on new projects, completing the projects, presenting your findings to the group you'd find yourself in during the internship. So once you are done with that, of course, your classes are also Saturdays and Sundays. Only Saturdays are for your live classes. So Saturdays are when you have the live classes. Sundays are for Watch Me Do It videos. So the Watch Me Do It videos are simply bite-sized videos you get on Sundays to watch and learn different concepts. So it is more controlled and self-paced. You can watch it anytime, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, based on your own convenience. But on Saturdays, you have your live class where you'd have a professional like myself, like other trainers that would help you work on projects, you work on projects together, you get to interact, you try out your code, you get errors, you ask questions, you get immediate feedback, and so on and so forth. So Saturdays, you have classes 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sundays, you have the Watch Me Do It videos that you get to watch. And for your different time zones, you also have different classes to fit into your schedule. For example, if you're in the UK, you're in Europe, you're in Africa, somewhere in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Ghana, you get to join this class, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. West Africa time, suited to your time zone. If you're in Canada, you're in the US, somewhere around North America, you get to join this class, which on Saturday is also 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Toronto, Canada time, all right? So the time suits your own specific time zone. And all you have to do once you are filling the registration form is to indicate, oh, I'd like to be in this class, or I'd like to be in this class. So if, for example, you could be in, in the UK and maybe during the day, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. during the day, you are busy because you go to work during the weekends. You can choose the class that comes up later in the day, which 11 a.m., um, Toronto, Canada time in the UK or in Nigeria should be around 4 p.m. West African time, okay? So if, for example, you are in the UK, you are in Nigeria, but you are busy in the morning, you can join the class that starts at 4, which is tailored towards those in Canada, in the US, and other regions within North America, okay? And how would your classes run? We've talked about this. You have your three months plus learning journey, your sessions are on Zoom, similar to what we are doing, Saturdays and Sundays. And then what makes you successful is not the technical skills you've learned, it's not all the things we've shown you today. It's simply your ability to do what? Position yourself, right? So the other 50%, which you must get, and this is where for us at Ten Analytics, we've been so successful helping so many people to make that jump and to make the switch and getting jobs. When you hear that, oh, I joined analytics and I got a job after one month or during my training, this is what made it successful. The other 50%, number one is your CV review, okay? So we show you how to tailor your CV to jobs, leveraging different AI tools. One of the AI tools is what? Chat. GPT. Another one is what? Jobalytics. Okay. So I'm just giving this to you as a bonus. Jobalytics. These are AI tools that will take the job description, take, take the job description of the job you are trying to apply to. You, you copy it and paste it on the platform. You would copy your CV and paste it on the platform and run a match. And it will tell you how many percent your current CV matches to that job. So immediately you can see, you'll see clearly that, look, I don't match up simply because I have not tailored my CV. So you start to work on your CV until you have a match of about 85% and above, all right? And these are the things we'll show you so that when you apply to that job, the number of unfortunately will start to drop and you start to get called for interviews. Your CV can pass through the ATS system, which weeds out CVs based on keywords that they have on the job description. So we'll show you how to do all of these things. Secondly, optimizing your LinkedIn profile, all right? So for anybody on the call, I always say this whenever I talk about this, just for anybody on the call, at the end of today's session, go on LinkedIn and search for 10 analytics. When you search 10 analytics and it comes up, 
click on people. You know, you'd see analytics posts, people, jobs, and so on. Click on people. And then you see all the things people have been doing and creating, those that have joined our programs, all right? And why is that so? Imagine you trying to get employed for a job. And then they've looked at your CV, fantastic. You have on your CV, you have the link to your portfolio, which you worked on during your virtual internship for one month. They go to your portfolio, they look at what you've done, looks, looks brilliant, looks fantastic. Then they go to your LinkedIn and they see nothing related to you want you being a data analyst or a data scientist. They can't see anything related to that. That's a red flag. That's a what? It's a red flag. So we show you how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Now, for those of you that want to get jobs, Upwork is one platform you want to leverage. Upwork. You want to get a remote job. You can't ignore Upwork. Okay? So it would help you build a profile if you don't have one. If you have one, it would help you optimize your profile until you get a verified Upwork profile. So you see the way you get verified on Instagram, you get verified on Twitter, you can also get verified on Upwork. And once you have that verification badge, what happens? Everybody comes to you. If they want to give a job, they go to those that are verified to give jobs. So we work with you to help you get a verified profile. And then navigating the job market is another session that is absolutely important. Why is this important? irrespective of where you are. So imagine you're in Nigeria, for example, you want to get a job as a data scientist. How do you start to leverage opportunities available? Where do you search for jobs? How do you apply to those jobs? How do you negotiate salaries? If an employer tells you that, look, we need your pay slip before we give you the job, how should you respond to those type of questions? All right. So navigating the job market is where we tell you exactly what you need to do. If you're in the UK, for example, you want to get a skilled worker visa, you want to transition from a student visa to a tier two visa so you can remain in the country. How do you do that? What is it based on? A lot of people lack the knowledge completely and they have no clue. They don't even know it's a point-based system where you need to accumulate 70 points. You need to get 70 points to transition to a tier two visa, for example. If you're in Canada, what type of jobs do you look at that are relevant to different pathways to PR, depending on your province and so on and so forth? We discuss all of that during navigating the job market. Recommendation and references to help back up your application when you get that job eventually. We write references for you because the organizations will reach out to us to say, can you provide a reference for this particular gentleman or lady who said they've worked with you before? We write compelling references for you to back up your applications, all right? Job and interview preparation. This is where we help you prepare for interviews, simulate questions, simulate the type of answers you need to give. How do you introduce yourself? How do you structure your stories in a way that makes sense and is relatable? to whoever you are speaking to, all right? Things as simple as leveraging, leveraging techniques like the SEAT approach for introducing yourself. S for skills, you start by talking about your skills, E for experience, you talk about your experience, A for your what? Achievements, you talk about what you've achieved, wherever you've worked before, and T for traits. What's your type of person? Do you like working with people? You know, do you go, you know, over and beyond to achieve certain things? Are you self-driven? We talk about all of that. So how do you leverage this to introduce yourself when you are in front of a panel of interviewers? And last but not the least is a weekly mentorship session. This weekly mentorship session is powerful, all right? I'm gonna play a very short clip of a gentleman who got a job two weeks ago, all right? So what we do is, for people like that, what we do is we bring them back to speak to other people, other participants who are currently taking the programs. So Benga, who got a job two weeks ago, he came back to talk to other people what he was able to do. I had an interview session with him. Ola BC, the business analysis facilitator, had an interview preparation session with him and Tony as well. The combination of all of that, he got four offers within a week. 
out of the four offers, he got he went for the best, you know, the one that you know favored him best in terms of um hybrid working, salary, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, of course, these are remote sites. You can get remote jobs. You get to work with fantastic professionals. Um, you have a couple of them here on the slide. Like we said, we shared the slides with you. Myself, I'm in the data analytics cohort. I work with the data analytics guys, including Tony, who is a fantastic data analytics lead at Analytics, Mohammed, uh, um, Temilo Lua, Victor. You guys saw Victor already. Victor works with the business analysis cohorts. Um, you have Ola Dakbo. Ola Dakbo works with Deloitte in Bermuda. He's going to work with you guys on your Excel, help you understand fantastic stuff. He's a senior consultant with Deloitte at Bermuda. So you are learning from the best professionals in the space, not just from anybody who went on YouTube or went on Coursera to learn. No, they are doing the job. They'll be sharing not just what they know technically, but also experiential learning, because you are also going to learn from their experience and do things the way it happens in the real world. You'd also learn from Olubemi. Olubemi is another fantastic gentleman, works in Canada with the Lord Depot. Um, he's going to work with you guys on Power BI and so many other tools. And for those in Canada, Olubemi would work with you guys with regards to your, your CV formats. What formats do you use in Canada, for example? Is going to work with you, help you structure that, and so many other things where to apply to jobs. Olubemi joined our program, just like so many of you also joined, completed the program, got a job in record time. I worked with him. We had interview preparation sessions together. And today he comes back to help other people to make that switch as well. You have the co-founder of Analytics of Emena handles the data science cohorts. You have Brimer. You saw Brimer earlier. She's going to work with, she's a senior data associate with Tenalytics. She's going to work with you guys as well, helping you on your Python, understanding how to build machine learning models, predictive analytics, how to build your projects on computer vision. Also work with Toma, data science as well. You'd work with China Zam, who works with DPD, Ireland. He works with DPD in Ireland. For those of you that know DPD, if you are in Europe, there's no way you wouldn't know DPD. DPD um, does delivery logistics and so on, one of the largest across Europe. He also works with Emmanuel. Emmanuel works with Softcom. For those of you in Nigeria, you definitely know Softcom. He works as a lead data and insight analyst, also going to work with you on your data science. You also have Obina who would work with you on data science. And then you have Linda, Linda works with a fintech. She's the lead for business analysis. So she's going to work with you guys for the business analysis program. You have a lab BC who works with Access Bank in Nigeria. You have Nena who is a product manager in the UK. You have Shin who works with Visa. He used to work with MTN in Nigeria, but today Shin works with Visa as a product integrations analyst, I think. At Visa, he's also going to work with you on your business analysis program. So you have professionals, fantastic professionals to work with you, all right, across the different programs. Now, when is the next cohort starting? Next cohort starts on the 1st of July, 2023. For those of you who would want to join, and I know so many people have been sending me DMs, what does it take? How much does it cost? This is our last uh, masterclass or free class for a while now, all right? So today is the last masterclass, free masterclass we are having, all right? So for those of you who would like to take advantage, you can still join the program. You have the opportunity to join, okay? And what we've done is we've held sessions from last week, free sessions, different sessions. Yesterday, we had three sessions. The day before, we had two sessions. To be a part of the program, if you are paying in pounds, it's 400 pounds. They are paying in Naira is 320,000 Naira. But then we had discounts for every single class we have like this. We give discounts for the first 20 data analytics people to register, first 20 business analysts and so on and so forth. Those discounts get taken immediately. And people have been saying, look, can I have a discount? Can I still take advantage? So we've left the discounts open until Wednesday when registration closes. So instead of paying 400 pounds, you have a discount, discounted fee of 300 pounds. You can pay 300 pounds to be a part of the program. 
and make your payments in two installments. So for any of the data analytics, the data science, the business analysis, you can be in any of those programs, taking advantage of the discounts between now and Wednesday, the 28th of June. That's when registration closes for this cohort that starts on the 1st of July, 2023. So if it's something you've always wanted to do, you've always wanted to be a data analyst, get amazing jobs within the tech ecosystem, or a data scientist, the sexiest job of the 21st century, like Harvard Business Review called it some years ago, or a business analyst also working in tech, this is the best place to start, the best place to be. And you can make your payment in two installments of £200 to get into the class or a hundred pounds and a hundred pounds one month after the program starts. If you are paying in Naira, all you have to pay is 270 to get started, 180 to register, and then 90,000 one month after the program commences. And these are the account details. Like I said, the slides will be sent to you. If you're paying in pounds, you can do a direct transfer to any of these accounts in pounds or a direct transfer in Naira if you're paying in Naira to a Fidelity Bank account. And once you have made payments, all you have to do is, my colleagues would send you a link for you to register and upload your proof of payment. Or you can just send us your proof of payment to any of these numbers and then we'll send you the link upload your proof of payment. Once we confirm that, you get into the class, okay? You could take a screenshot of it, take advantage of the discount we have running, which ends on Wednesday, the 28th of June. You can also make payments using the PayPal link, which my colleagues would also make available to everybody who has joined this session. You get the recording, you get the slides, you have access to all the materials and all the details we have on the slide, you can make payments using the PayPal link. And if you want to make payments using your card and you are in Nigeria, you have a Naira card, debit or credit card, Naira. You can make payments using Paystack, okay? All you have to do is click on the Paystack link and then it takes you to where you can select the program you'd like to register for. Register and then upload your proof of payments. So after making payments, we confirm your proof of payments. We send you a welcome kit, all right? The welcome kit contains all the materials you need. So let's take, for example, you have, you joined the data analytics program. You need to have Excel. You need to have Power BI. You need to have um, SQL. The project is a um, SQL management tool, all right? Like PostgreSQL or SSMS. You have how to install any of those database management systems on your computers. Tableau as well, you have the link to download and how to install Tableau. And every single thing you need, you have that in the welcome kits. So once you make payment, like I said, you can send us a message to any of these numbers, or you can send us emails to any of these emails. For the data analytics, the email is dataanalytics at tenalytics.io data science at tenalytics.io and business analysis at tenalytics.io, all right? Now, how have people made the best out of learning with us? Benga, I'm just gonna talk about only Benga's story because time is fast spent. I'll talk about just Benga and then we'll wrap up. I'll take questions if you have any, and then we call it a day. Benga two weeks ago got four offers. I talked about Benga, right? And I'm gonna show you he came back during, on Thursday, he came for the mentorship session to share his story to other students who are still learning with us, okay? Like I mentioned, Binga sent me this message. Of course, I had interview preparation. I worked with him in terms of the questions he should prepare for and so on. He lives in Poland. Binga is in Poland. He got a job as a business data analyst after completing his data analytics program with us. So he sent me a message to say, boss, I got the job. I was super excited for him. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. So he also sent this message to say, also, your team has been really helpful, especially with the background check. And this is where references and recommendations comes into play. Organizations would want to know, they'll do a background check on you. Who are you? Who have you worked with? Who can vouch for your character? 
okay? Who can vouch for your character, who knows who you are, and so on and so forth. Okay, so they'd want to know about this, they'd want to hear from you. And that's why it's absolutely important for you to have somebody that can vouch for you, stand as a referee, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to show you Binga very quickly, and then we'll wrap up the session. Like I mentioned, it's always good for, for people who are trying to get into a path, for anybody who wants to become a data analyst, for example. You've seen somebody who started a class with you, and he has gotten a job it's easier for you to relate with that person, understand from that person's perspective, oh, maybe these were the things I did that you're not doing, all right? So he came back during our mentorship session because we always do that. We always bring people back for them to come share their story when they have successes like this, okay? So I'm just gonna show you very quickly. This is what the platform looks like. When you join any of our programs, let's open up the data analytics, the May cohort, those that join in May, what their classroom looks like, and then I'll show you Benga's video, okay? So this is what the classroom looks like. So when you register, you join a Google Classroom. So if I click on Classwork, you'd see all your materials, okay? So a typical class would be on this platform, all right? So you've had your live classes, for anybody who missed a class, for example, if I go all the way down, if you missed a class, all you have to do once you have time is to come back to this platform and you have access to any of the classes that you missed. So first of all, you have your onboarding materials, which would include your welcome kits and everything. You have your very first class, problem solving class. You have your login details to get into the class the live class, obviously, you have the class slides, okay? So you have access to the slides. If I click on this, for example, you'd see the slides that the, the facilitator used in class. And this particular facilitator was Nene. Nene is a professional. She works with, currently works with Zillos in the UK, an authorized licensee of Nike, all right? So they do work for Nike. Um, you all know Nike, obviously. She has over five years experience within the space. She's worked, she has a master's in international business from the University of Portsmouth. Um, she's worked with different organizations, the Bank of America, KPMG, while, while she was still in Nigeria. She worked for KPMG, worked for the Bank of America in the UK, uh, worked for Laura's Development Partners and so on and so forth. So you see the slides, what was used in class and you have access to all these materials on the platform. The class recording is also there. So if you miss the class, all you have to do is come here, click on the recording and you have access to the recording. So I'm just gonna go to the last mentorship session, the most recent one that we had, which was on the 22nd of June. Okay, the 22nd of June. So let's assume you missed this session. You come to the mentorship session, click on the recording and open it. So I'm just going to open it. Sometimes it might take a little, a few seconds to come up, but I'm just going to play it. And I want you to see Benga because we brought Benga back. The same Benga I just showed you on my slide. We brought him back to say, Benga, look, come back, share your story with other people. You could inspire somebody to keep on applying to jobs. Somebody who started, started with you has gotten a job. And you can also get that job. So I'm just going to share the audio with you so you can listen a little bit, maybe just for a minute, to what Benga was saying here when he came back. So if, if I press play and you can hear the audio, just type in yes into the chat so I know you can hear. With us. Benga is going to be sharing his experience with us. Um, I can say that it's going to did you hear the audio? Just type in yes if you did. If you heard the audio, you could hear Twin speaking. Just type in yes. Okay, beautiful. So I can just continue. I'm just going to, I'll just, I think I'll scroll a little bit. All right, so we can see Benga himself. This is Twin. Twin is the data analytics lead. This is Benga, the gentleman on my slide. So let's listen to Benga just very briefly. Because from my own experience, I feel like during these sessions, they already know the questions they are going to ask me during the interviews. 
especially the one we got olavisi olavisi basically gave me some like set of questions that 80 percent of them i got them from the interview imagine i didn't mm. study those questions or so i'll just be shaking my mouth in front of the interview and i'm mm. really really appreciative for this opportunity i must say that um you have all the details some important points direct direct points to the my one of my experiences just has five points on there some people can put 20 10 word cvs and they are probably very difficult to read you understand so when you see this key points these things on they will definitely teach you the reason why i'm saying this is because i don't want to drop sensitive information of my cv all right so i'm just going to pause it there all right so we don't take too much time like i said so this is benga the same guy I told you got four offers, got a job as a business data analyst. We brought him back to say, look, come share your experience. And you heard when he talked about Olabisi helping him out during his interview preparation. Okay, I'm just going to piggyback to the slide where we have Olabisi. This is Olabisi. Olabisi worked with Benga during his interview, helped him prepare. And you could hear, he said almost over 80% of the questions Olabc prepared him for came out during the interview, and of course, when you give very compelling answers to the questions you are asked during a session like that, an interview session, then it's a no-brainer. You are well on your way to getting that job. So these are the things that makes if you see a analytics participant, and you are competing with a analytics participant for a job, then you have your work cut out for you because you are meeting a professional that has, that, that has been properly groomed and prepared for that role, okay? And those are the things we bring to bear to help you ensure that you are successful in any, any program you register with us for, okay? So I'm not gonna take any more um, of your time. We're gonna call it a day at this point. If you have questions, you can send your questions in. I'll be very, happy to answer your questions, okay? So like I mentioned, this is the last session, the last free session we'll be having before the program that starts on the 1st of July. So if it's something you want to do, I've always wanted to get into this, but look, I always, I've been learning on YouTube for a long time, but my learning approach is not structured, okay? How can I change that narrative? The first place to do that is with, analytics there's no power bi in data science yes the reason is a lot when it comes to data science which focuses on predictive analytics like i mentioned i'm just quickly going to go back to the data that part you're talking about the reason is simple when you you can't use power bi power bi is not flexible i won't say you can't use it's not flexible when it comes to statistical analysis because remember, I, I talked about the fact that you need to understand how to forecast, how to predict as a data scientist. Power BI can do, you can do some statistical analysis, but you will struggle with Power BI compared to Tableau. And that's why you have Tableau instead of Power BI for data science. So as a data scientist, you are learning a business intelligence tool because Tableau is a business intelligence tool. Power BI is also a business intelligence tool. And they can be, they basically do the same set of um, analytics, data visualization, and so on and so forth, building dashboards, telling story, building stories and charts and visuals. But when it comes to statistical analysis, forecasting, predictive analytics, tab Tableau trumps Power BI. Right, and that's why you don't have Power BI in the data, the full stack data science curriculum. I hope that makes sense to you. If I want to do a simple linear regression, for example, on Power BI, i will need to write very long DAX expressions to do that, okay? But on Tableau, it's a lot easier for me to do a linear regression or do other type of statistical analysis, okay? All right, so thank you for that question, Ola. That was a very brilliant question. So again, for guys, for those of you who might need one-on-one -on -one, um, 
conversations to say, look, I have been doing, I've been in the health sector for a very long time. So I need somebody that can help me understand what exactly do I need to do, okay? You can reach out to any of the admin on your WhatsApp group, if you join the WhatsApp group, or send us a message to any of the WhatsApp message to any of the numbers. So you can just take a screenshot of the numbers, any of the two numbers, somebody would respond to you immediately, immediately. Send us a message and then you get to hear from us. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session. But remember, registration closes on Wednesday. So anything after Wednesday, it's a no-go. We won't be taking registrations afterwards. You have different people. Anointing got a job, Stephen. Stephen is in the UK, got a job with the Access Group here in the UK after joining the data analytics program. You have Whistling. Whistling got a job with Shell in the UK as a sales analyst. She joined the program, had never done anything analytics before. And these are my conversations with them when they got the job. Of course, I've tried to hide any sensitive information. Uh, Stephen reached out to me, sent him some materials to prepare. We had interview sessions on Zoom for one hour, these are the questions you should look out for. This is how you should structure your story. And he got a job. He reached out to me, collected details for referencing. The company reached out to me and I feel the reference just like I did for Benga as well. The organizations would always reach out to say, look, Benga is trying to apply to a job. He said he's worked with you. He's worked with you before. Do you know him? Did he really do the things he said he has done? And of course, we give you compelling references. You have Emeka works with Western Union, Ulubemi who work with you for those in Canada, got a job with um, the Lord Depot in Edmonton, Canada, as a business data analyst after joining the data analytics program. When you get the slides, listen to Ulubemi's um, feedback. Okay, very, very compelling and interesting. From Nigeria, he used to work in the bank. He quit his job wanted to relocate, joined our program, got to Canada within the space of two months after getting to Canada. He had completed his training program, got a job as a business data analyst. He got confirmed within four months instead of six. And then after then, it's been upwards and onwards for Ulubemi. Listen to his story, very, very compelling. You have Uthman who works with the NHS as a business intelligence support officer after completing his data analytics program. You have Ubong who works with Cognizant in the UK. He did his full stack data science program with us and also completed data analytics. So he took two programs with us. You have Idris. Idris works with, a, with Jaguar Land Rover in the UK as a data engineer after completing the full stack data science program with us. You have Ebele who works with the NHS as a data scientist also joined the full stack data science program. And of course she sent us a message saying that, look, this is my first proper job in the UK. And I got this after the Tenalytics training. She was super excited. She's been doing that for, um, I think almost a year. She got the job last, towards the end of last year. You have Victor. Victor works as a people operations analyst. He works remotely with a company in the, in the US. He lives in Nigeria, earns in dollars, spends in Naira. You have Maureen. Maureen got a job with Telos. For those in, in Canada, you know Telos. Telos is um, a telecommunications company, just like your MTN, just like your uh, Virgin Media, just like your, um, you know, if you're in the UK, for example, just like your three and your different mobile networks. She got a job with Telos. After joining our program, you have Thelma who got a job in the UK as well. You have Rafia who got a job as a business analyst. You have Abdur Rashid who got a job as a data scientist working remotely from Quara State, working for a company in the US, Chow 420, earning in dollars, spending in Naira. So you have access to all of this. And I'll just end by showing you what people have built after completing our program. Okay, so you have this gentleman, the links to the, the links to the LinkedIn post. I've also put them on the slide so you can go look at it and you know see how amazing. Like I said, you can't be a data analyst. You don't have something like this on your LinkedIn profile or a data scientist. You don't have projects you built on your LinkedIn profile. It's just a waste of time. You've not, you're not, you're not really getting started. 
Okay. Now let's see this amazing computer vision program. I talked about it earlier. And you'd see people that have built computer vision programs. Okay. So you'd see them one by one. So you can see that. That's a hand detection project. For those who join the data science program, you're going to build this. You build object recognition, right? You'd use the, the webcam of your laptop. The webcam of your laptop would be the, the camera that would what? Detect those motions and hand gestures and so on. So you'd see that's a posture detection program built for somebody who joined our full stack data science program. And all these projects are on LinkedIn. They're all on LinkedIn, all of them. Okay, so people build this, they take videos, they put it on LinkedIn, it's part of their projects. So whenever they are going to an interview, they have an interview coming up, guess what? They show people this. And for anybody who can build object detection, you must have very solid knowledge using Python and so on. Okay, so these are things people have built. Pose detection, you can see that. Pose detection. Okay. You can see that's another pose detection. Okay, so these are things people have built. Hand detection programs and so on. These are the technologies that drive your facial recognition. When you pick up your phone, you put it in front of your face, it opens it up and so on, All right? So I'm just gonna stop here and I'm going to call it a day. Time has been fast spent. You get the slides, you get the recordings, you get all the details that you need. Remember, registration ends on Wednesday, the 28th of June. If you want to be a part of the program and get started, be a part of the program. The discount has been extended until the end of registration. So you can all take advantage of the discounts. Feel free to reach out to us on any of our numbers and we'll be very happy to hear from you, all right? So I wish you a fantastic, productive week ahead. And I want to see you in class. Go ahead, reach out to us. You can put send us a message. You want a one-on-one -on -one session. You want to have a conversation with me to help you understand which of the three you need to select, reach out to us and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Have an amazing week ahead. And until we see another time, cheers guys.